Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of County of, of Commissioners as advisory, as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected official will have the final say on anything before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item tonight, please go to the table on my left and sign up to speak. For those who wishing to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Could we have roll call, please? Mr. Bryan? Present. Mr. Busby? Ms. Freeman? Present. Mr. Ghosh? Present. Mr. Gibbs? Present. Mr. Harris? Present. Mr. Hornbuckle? Present. Mr. Ms. Hyman? Present. Mr. Johnson? Present. Mr. Kinchin? Present. Mr. Miller? Present. Mr. Van? Present. Mr. Whitley? And for the record, uh, Mr. I didn't get that seating chart. The, no, the the two people that were Al Turk and Mr. Commissioner Bugsby were excused. They have excused absence. And I guess I will entertain a motion that we excuse them. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. So all in favor of excusing Mr. Altuk, Alturk and uh, Commissioner Bugsby, please uh, raise your right hand. It's unanimous, 12 to zero. Okay. Do we have an adjustments to the agenda? Um, yes, uh, good evening, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. I would like to add under new business a resolution and appreciation for Ms. Linda Huff for her service on the Planning Commission, please. Okay. And in addition, I would like to certify that all notices and advertisements requirements for these uh, cases were met per EDO and state statute in their own file in the Planning Department. Affidavits were set their own file. So. And also, I would like to have announcements uh, under new business. Uh, okay, and before we uh, approve the agenda, I'm sorry, before we approve the uh, minutes, there, I gave you minutes from June 14th. There were some adjustments in it. Would you like to address that? Yes, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. We did modify and um, we made some revisions to the consistency statement for the Shannon Road retail case. Um, we had to go back and revisit that consistency statement and due to vacations and whatnot, staff wasn't able to meet till recently and the packets had already gone out. So if you would just see that one case, that consistency statement has been updated. And other than that, no changes to that set of minutes. And then the other set that was in your packet from February, I highlighted where two people were originally left off as being in attendance and they were actually here. So we need to reapprove those minutes with those two members um, showing us present, if you don't mind. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the February minutes as amended. Okay, I have one question. I will second that motion because I have a correction to the June minutes. Okay. So you've heard the motion that we approve the February minutes all those in favor, show, let it known be shown by raising the right hand. All those in opposition. Okay, now what's your pleasure with the June minutes? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Let me get the motion first and you can make the correction. Can I get motion. a Motion to approve the June minutes as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, it's been motioned and seconded that we approve the June minutes. Are there any corrections? On page two of the minutes, uh, item number four, approval of the minutes. 
the motion that I made that, that was approved was that we approved the minutes from the May 10th, 2016 meeting and the attached consistency statement. And the reason I bring this up is because staff has emphasized the need for us to approve the consistency statements and I believe our minutes should indicate that we did that. Staff is in agreement with that correction, and thank you for bringing that to our attention, Mr. Brown. So, all those, and yes. So, in that case, should we make a similar distinction for the February minutes that we just approved? We will be more than happy to do that while we're here. Yes. While we're here. Yes. So, well, hold on. We got one. We need to finish yeah. this so one, I, but yes. At the appropriate time, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. The motion on the floor is to approve the June minutes with the consistency statement. Uh, that's attached. All those in favor of that approval, please raise your right hand. All those in opposition? Okay, motion carries. And at this point, uh, I will entertain Commissioner Miller. Mr. Chairman, if I may, there's a question for the staff first. Yes. So without having, help me remember, what is the, how is the consistency statements for our February decisions incorporated into the minutes? Is it an attachment or is it They're built part in? of the minutes, just like these, the ones we're doing here tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually in the, minute, in the minutes, but um, the, the same motion would work as included in the minutes would be fine. So Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, having already approved those February minutes as amended, I now move that we approve the consistency statements re, uh, for the cases from the February cases. Do a second? Second. The motion on the floor is to approve the consistency statements for the February meeting. All those in favor, raise the right hand. Those in opposition. All right, thank you. At this point, could we get a motion to approve the agenda as modified? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. So the motion on the floor is to adopt the agenda as modified. The commissioner, uh, right, who second? Oh, Commissioner Van second. All those in favor of uh, approving the agenda as modified, please raise the right hand. Those in opposition? Thank you. At this point, we will now uh, open the public hearing. Uh, item number six, public hearing on Ellis Road, commercial A1500004. We seem to be having a bit of difficulty with our screens. <laughs> shake the mouse. She says shake the mouse. <laughs> and it, it, it worked. miraculously worked. I'm Laura Woods and uh, I will be presenting your first case this evening. This is um, Ellis Road Commercial, A15000004. The applicant is Ornfath Associates PA and it is within the city jurisdiction. The request is from industrial to commercial. It is within the suburban development tier. The acreage is 14.76 acres and there is an associated zoning case. And here is the area in question. It is located north of Ellis Road and a bit to the east of the intersection of Ellis with Durham Parkway and a bit to the west of the right of way of Southern Railway. Here are the four criteria that staff use to evaluate plan amendments. Um, first of all, whether the proposed change is consistent with adopted plans. 
whether the proposed change is compatible with existing land uses and adopted or future, designated future land uses, whether the proposed change would create any adverse impacts, and whether the subject site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed use. Under the comprehensive plan, these are the policies we use to ana um, analyze this particular plan amendment. We can discuss those uh, further if you feel the need. Now then, uh, in terms of the area, um, to the north is vacant, west and east is vacant, to the south are industrial uses. In terms of compatibility, that, cr that was criteria B, uh, this would represent a slight expansion of a proposed or intended uh, commercial node at the intersection of Durham Freeway and Ellis Road. As you see, there, um, land uses in the area, future designated uses, are, well, fairly diverse. Uh, we do uh, consider this compatible. Under criteria C, there are no substantive, substantial adverse impacts, and it is definitely of adequate shape and size to accommodate the intended land use. So, in each case, of the four criteria, the proposal meets the criteria, is successful in meeting the criteria, therefore, staff recommends approval. That completes my report. Thank you very much. Okay, I have one person signed up to speak in favor. Tim Silver, Severe. We're going to have a staff report on the zoning case. Okay. Okay, we open the public hearing for zoning case one five quadruple zero seven. Well, thank you. Good evening, Jacob Wiggins with the planning department. Um, this is Ellis Road Commercial, um, also submitted by Horvath Associates. Um, this is a rezoning request for a sixty four point five six acre um, site. Um, and the applicant is requesting the zoning designation of commercial general with a development plan, CGD, with a proposed use of a maximum of 500,000. Mr. Jacobs, could you speak into the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, with a maximum of 500,000 square feet of commercial floor area and a maximum of 381 upper story residential units. Uh, the subject side is highlighted in front of you in red. Um, located um, at the northeast quadrant of Ellis Road at the Durham Freeway. Uh, zoning standards for the CG district. Um, the minimum site area is 20,000 square feet. The applicant is providing uh, approximately 65 acres. Uh, minimum lot width of 100 feet. Uh, the applicant's lot width um, of the entirety of the site is over 1,600 linear feet. Uh, there's no minimum project floor area that's required. Um, the applicant is requesting a maximum of 500,000 square feet and a maximum height of 50 feet. Uh, some existing conditions at the site. Um, as you can see, this, uh, the request is comprised of a number of parcels located along the Durham Freeway and Ellis Road. The comprehensive plan um, amendment, which Laura just spoke of, is generally located on the eastern side of the subject site. Uh, the proposed conditions, um, you can see these in your packet. Um, so the applicant has denoted on the plan um, site connections, um, as well as some buffers um, and tree save areas. And again, committing to the commercial floor area maximum, as well as the upper story residential unit um, with a maximum residential density of 5.995 dwelling units per acre. Um, also, um, a, one of the summary of the commitments is that the, there will be one potential stream crossing, uh, four site access points, a maximum impervious service of 85%, which equates to approximately 55 acres, 
and 14% of tree coverage will be maintained at the subject site, which is approximately nine acres. So the summary of some of the text commitments, again, the applicant is requesting upper story residential units only. Um, they will construct a bus pullout and concrete pad and bus shelter. Um, there will be additional asphalt uh, four feet in width along Ellis Road to allow for a bicycle lane. Um, they have proposed to, or excuse me, committed to close Southland Drive um, and they will dedicate right of way along Ellis Road. As you can see in the future land use map, um, so the areas designated as both commercial and industrial in the future land use map, um, the applicant is requesting to change that industrial portion to commercial. Um, the comprehensive plan policies regarding this request, um, staff finds that the request is in harmony with all policies save for the future land use map. Um, and staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, that this request would be consistent with the future land use map and the comprehensive plan and any other adopted policies and ordinances. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Dick. Okay, Tim, Savia. Tim, you have 10 minutes. Oh, I won't need that much, sir. Thank you, though. Tim Sivers, Horvath Associates, 16 Consultant Place. Um, I'd like to thank uh, staff for their, their hard work on this project. Um, they've done a lot of the summary, but I'll go over a few brief points. Uh, for the plan amendment, as you noticed, it is only about 15 acres, where the zoning is about 65 acres. Uh, the remaining portion that is being rezoned is already commercial. Um, the site is located at the, north, uh, the northeast corner of 147 and Ellis Road. Currently, it's pretty much a uh, forested site with mix of evergreen and deciduous. Uh, the plan amendment is a request from industrial to commercial, where the zoning is a request to CGD. Uh, we, did hold, we did hold a neighborhood meeting um, back in uh, late January. We had about 25 neighbors come out, which I thought was a pretty good uh, turnout for the neighborhood. Um, that neighborhood meeting included this site and a parcel to the north, re the residential parcel. Um, we, we did a combined meeting at that time. Um, and the majority of the neighbors that came out had, had questions about the northern parcel, about the residential piece. Um, we didn't, during the meeting, we didn't have any, any uh, negative feedback about this commercial site. Um, we've contacted planning this week, and as far as they've concerned, they said they haven't heard any negative uh, feedback from the neighbors as well. So uh, we believe we have a pretty good neighbor, neighborhood uh, neighbor position on this. Um, the site for the zoning aspect of it is again 500,000 square foot maximum. It's three, a maximum of 381 upper story residential units. Uh, the development plan does uh, show the internal and external road improvements. Uh, the external road improvements are all listed as text commitments on the cover sheet. Um, the uh, commercial, back to the land use aspect of it, uh, the site is, the proposed site is uh, contiguous development from the neighboring uh, commercial area, uh, which is one of the policies that the staff reviews. Another policy that they review is uh, looking at infrastructure and consistency. Uh, the infrastructure with existing and proposed infrastructure, uh, utilities and, uh, and road improvements meet the requirements, which is why Laura and her staff uh, suggested approval of the plan amendment. Um, and as she mentioned, it is consistent with the uh, adjacent land use patterns in the area. So. Um, I ask for your approval tonight, and I'm available for any questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members in the audience that wish to speak to this item? Do we have any other members of the public that wish to speak to this item? If not, then we will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do I have commissioners that would like to speak to this item? Okay. George. Pardon me? I, I know, I see. Okay, Miller. Teacher in the Mr. Jacobs. Sir, Mr. Chairman, um, just wanted to have one point of clarification. Um, we did receive one email this afternoon. Um, I believe the planning commissioners uh, received that email as well um, in regards to communication regarding this project. Okay. So, thank you. Is that you. the one from Michael Pollock? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay, Commissioner Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of quick questions for the applicant. Uh, 
Um, I noticed that there are a lot of external transportation improvements you have to make. Yes, sir. Uh, do you control the right of way necessary to make those improvements? Yes, sir. Okay. And when I was out there, it looked like there was a big, I saw one of these big pieces of equipment, a big shovel out there, and uh, I wondered what, what activity was going on on the site. Uh, there's no activity on this site. The adjacent site is the apartment complex that, that is off, off and, and not part of this application. Um, but that, the apartment complex is under construction now. Yeah, I, I know the sand, yeah. but it looked like this was a little further over uh, based on the curvature of the road. Yeah, they're, they're using that, that spot. It's, it's all owned by the same developer, um, and they're using that spot for some storage. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have one question for staff. Um, I understand that NC-47 will in the future be upgraded to interstate status once the east end connector is finished. So we'll have interstate connectivity between I-85 and I-40. My question is, will upgrading NC-147 at this point have any impact at all on what the improvements that are being requested of this developer? Mr. Judge. <laughs> uh. Bill Judge with City of uh, Durham Department of Transportation. Uh, no, uh, 147, it, while it's not signed as an interstate, it's already been constructed previously to interstate okay. standards, so the East End Connector will just simply sign it or mark it as an interstate, um, so that will have no impact on, on the recommended roadway improvements. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a question for staff. So in our staff report, it says a maximum floor area of 500,000 square feet, but I didn't see that in the commitments in the staff report. Is that a practical limitation, or is that actually a commitment in the, in the committed elements? And I tried to read the plan itself, but the print was too little for me. Um, Jacob Wiggins with the planning department. Yes, um, as you can see on the third page of the development plan, it is noted on there. So they it's are, a similar it's a thing. Graphic, it's a graphic commitment on the development plan. Okay, great. I figured it probably was. I just couldn't find it. And then while you're standing at the mic, mm -hmm. so uh, is it 381 or 361 upper floor units? It's different things on different pages. Sir, um, I apologize for that. Well, the, I figured that I figured that the type was too small for you to read too. <laughs> Um, the, the plans say 381 upper it, story. It units. is 81. Yes, yeah, so it should be 81. All right, thank you. That's all, that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Tim. Uh, Commissioner Miller, I'd just like to clarify it. It's a maximum of 381. I realize that. And, okay. and while you're standing there, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, any minimums? Are you, is you? Is there a possibility that this could get built out with no residential component at all? Uh, it is possible. All right. Commissioner Freeman. For the, I have a question for the applicant as well. And you mentioned that there was no negative feedback regarding the commercial side. Was as far as far as we're aware, I know uh, Jacob had mentioned there was an email that came out this afternoon. I have not seen that email. So if that was, it, okay, um, Jacob, if you want to inform, I, I, as far as I know right now, there's not. But Jacob, please let us. Um, yeah, Jacob Williams, the planning department. Yeah, you and I had spoken this morning, um, and there was a gentleman that emailed um, staff and the planning commission this afternoon, okay. um, noting some uh, potential concerns, I guess, uh, regarding environmental, uh, environmentally sensitive issues with the site. Well, I, mm -hmm. I will definitely get with Jacob on that and, mm -hmm. and get that email and, and address those concerns. And all, I just, I was just wondering the way you stated it. It seemed like maybe there was a something in conjunction with this that. There was some negative feedback on just checking uh, at, at our neighborhood meeting that was a neighborhood meeting for this site and a site to the north which is residential mm -hmm. most of the comments that during the meeting were about the residential okay. um, actually we started the presentation at the uh, neighborhood meeting with the commercial and instantly all the questions went to the residential portion um, which is not not part of this application okay. uh, so that's what I was referring to and by any means, is it tied together? No, or? two separate, two total separate projects. Okay, just happen to be next door to each other. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, Fre Freeman, uh, are you are you finished? Uh, I'm sorry. I have another question for you. you need to turn your mic on. Um, 
and I'm not for certain, so going forward with a vote on this, if we don't know what the possible environmental hazards that were, I guess, uh, brought up in that email, I, I missed the email, I'm sorry, did anyone else see it? And just if you could address the environmental hazard and put my mind to rest, that would be helpful. Sure, Jacob Williams will behind the apartment. Um, at this time, um, yeah, the development plan is not that site specific. Um, any environmental issues could be addressed at the time of site plan. Um, the project would be required to meet UDO standards regarding um, stream buffers, um, any other environment, environmentally sensitive areas at the subject site. I mean, the applicant does show a, uh, they do show the buffer on their development plan. They're committing to the required stream buffer at this time, but any more detailed items would be um, addressed at the site plan stage. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gibbs. Well, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I, and I forgot the guy's name that sent this email. Uh, you, Paula, yeah, this is the one we're talking about, just as a point of verification. Yes. Okay. Uh, that, I just wanted to be sure that I didn't miss any other email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Miller. This is for the developer. I apologize. I didn't ask this when I had the mic before uh, going through my notes. So you are surrounded, if this goes through, you'll be completely surrounded with property which is uh, designated for uh, low, medium density residential. Are you proposing any kind of additional buffers other than the minimum required by the code? Uh, at this time, no. We'll be meeting the, min the code minimum. Um, speak into we, the mic, please. Uh, We're being televised is the reason I keep asking uh, you to uh, speak into the mic so the people in, at home can hear what we're saying. Yes, thank you. Uh, Tim Sivers, Horvath Associates, who are the uh, applicant on the project. Um, at this time, we're, we're proposing to commit to the min minimum uh, landscape buffer. Once the uh, site plan is submitted, um, we'll, we'll be following that as well. Um, there may be some additionals at the time of site plan once the final site is laid out and designed where the parking or the building is laid out. Um, but for at this point, we'll be just, we'll commit to the minimum. If I may, Mr. Chairman, for the staff, what would that, uh, what would the buffer options be for this property between this and low medium residential? Excuse me, Jacob Williams <coughs> with the planning department. Is it 25 feet with an opacity of six or four? Reducible to, you're, you're gonna have to tell me, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, um, Jacob Wiggins with the planning department. So it is somewhat dependent uh, upon the adjacent zoning district, mm -hmm. not what the future land use map says. Um, but in general, with CG adjacent to residential districts, um, Typically within this tier, you're looking at usually 30 feet of a width. Um, and th yeah, there may be means to- Reducible slightly. with a wall and hedge? Correct. Down to a minimum of? If you reduce it to a wall, you could, it would be 22.5 feet All right. at that point. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, the chair will now entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I Mr. move Brian. that we Recommend approval of plan amendment case A1500004. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Bryant, second by Commissioner Whitley, that we send forward uh, A15004 with a favorable recommendation. All those will please have a roll call, please, because of the new members. Mr. Bryan? Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. Motion carries 12 to 0. All right, thank you. Now we will open the public hearing on 
Ellis mm -hmm. Road. Um, okay, the zoning case. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may, I move that we recommend approval of zoning case Z1500007. Motion by Commissioner Bryan, second by Commissioner Freeman that we move forward with uh, zoning case 15 quadruple zero seven with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, please roll call. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Motion carries 12 to 0. Okay. So, thank you. We will now open the public hearing on Ellis Road townhouses A16 quadruple zero 03 and zoning <coughs> case 16 quadruple zero 04. Uh, Ms. Wood. Laura Woods, Planning Department, and this is Ellis Road Townhomes. Uh, the applicant in this case is Ellis Road Residential 2 LP. It is within the city jurisdiction, and the proposal is from low density residential to low medium density residential. It is in the suburban tier, and the size of the uh, proposal is a bit over 25 acres. The site is located slightly to the east of the previous case that you heard this evening. It is located on the north side of Ellis Road and on the eastern side adjacent to the um, Southern, Ra Southern Rail right of way. And as you see uh, from the future land use desi uh, designations here, it's a quite diverse area. Again, here are four criteria. Uh, the we look to see if the proposed change is consistent with adopted plans, whether it is compatible with land use patterns, whether it would create, create any substantial adverse impacts, or and whether the proposed use uh, meets the, uh, whether the site is of adequate shape and size to uh, accommodate the use. In this case, we uh, utilized these comprehensive plan policies to evaluate the proposal. Um, the site um, is bounded on the west by vacant land, to the north by recreation open space. Uh, in the east, residential, single family residential and uh, vacant uses. To the south, uh, single family residential and vacant, and to the west, um, vacant land. In terms of compatibility, we find that the proposed use is compatible. The land to the west is um, designated low, medium des density residential. Uh, and the proposal forms a, a pretty good buffer between low density residential to the north and east and more um, intense uses to the south. We find there are no substantial adverse impacts and the proposal, is, the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed use. Uh, therefore, the proposal meets all four criteria. Therefore, staff recommends approval. That completes my report. Thank you. Jacob Wiggins again with the planning department. Uh, so this case is for Ellis Road townhomes. Um, the applicant 
Um, is the city of Durham on behalf of Ellis Road Residential 2. Um, the city is the applicant on this case because there is an annexation petition associated with this request. So this, this property is currently within the county's jurisdiction, uh, but is being reviewed as a city case. Um, the applicant is requesting a zoning designation of PDR 7.550. Uh, there's 25.60 acres at the subject site, and the applicant is proposing a maximum of 165 townhomes for this project. The subject site highlighted in red in front of you. Um, as you can see, this property is located directly east of the rail right of way along El Ellis Road um, and slightly down the road from the Durham Freeway, as was the previous case, the Ellis Road commercial case. Um, however, those two are not related. Um, zoning standards, um, excuse my typo at the top, this is for the PDR or for the, for the residential district in this case. Uh, the maximum density, um, assuming the plan amendment request is approved, would be eight dwelling units per acre. Uh, the applicant is proposing 7.550 dwelling units per acre. Um, a minimum of 17% of open space is required. The applicant is providing 20%. Um, a minimum site of four acres, which the applicant has 25.6, um, and a maximum height of 35 feet, which is also proposed by the applicant. Um, existing conditions at the subject site. Um, again, um, excuse the typo on this, um, as this is the previous um, request. Some proposed conditions. Um, as you can see the, the slide, um, so the site is, the, the plans are flipped. Ellis Road is along the right hand side of this page. Um, you see that the applicant um, shows a stream buffer on this plan as well as some site connections. Um, some summary of the commitments provided by the applicant. Um, again, the maximum um, of 165 residential units, one potential stream crossing, four site access points, um, a maximum of pervious service of 60%, and tree coverage of 20%. Um, graphic commitments also include preservation of tree areas, the aforementioned site access points, a building and parking envelope, as well as stream buffers. Um, some text commitments. The applicant has committed to only doing townhomes, um, constructing a bus pullout and shelter along Ellis Road, as well as dedicating additional asphalt and right-of-way for a bicycle lane along Ellis Road, uh, widening Ellis Road for a three-lane cross-section along this property's frontage, as well as constructing an eastbound left turn lane into the site. Um, the future land use map, um, as you recently saw, um, this property is not in har or the request is not in harmony with the future land use map. However, assuming that the the plan amendment uh, request is approved, this case would be compliant with the comprehensive plan and other applicable policies. Um, and again, so the staff determines that should the the commission recommend approval of that, then this request would be compliant with the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, four, well, three people that's in favor wishing to speak. Uh, Benny Ring. And the question mark, you don't know whether you for or against? I would ask that you would consider the traffic and. The okay, but are you, you want to I'm speak against in favor? Against, against it? Okay, fine. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I have three people speaking in favor of this. Uh, so I give you 3.33 minutes each. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, why don't we give them four minutes? Okay, so uh, if you make a motion out of that, I'll entertain it. I move that we give the speakers uh, a minimum of four minutes. Second. It's been motion and second by motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Freeman, that each uh, of the residents speaking for get, be given four minutes for a total of 12, and then the opposition will also have 12 minutes. All those in favor of that motion, please let it be known by showing a hand, right hand. 
All those in opposition? Okay, and so ordered. So the first speaker is Laura Holman. Good evening, uh, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Laura Holloman, and just for clarification, I am the authorized agent for this project on behalf of a developer. Uh, address 972 Trinity Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, Spalding and Norris um, Engineering. Staff did a wonderful job of outlining our request for both the comprehensive plan amendment as well as the zoning. Uh, speaking to the comprehensive plan amendment first, you know, the, the comprehensive plan is a very technical and comprehensive document, and it's done that on purpose. Um, it shouldn't be easy to amend. And um, it, it goes through very specific uh, four criteria. Uh, is the proposed change, is it consistent with the intent and goals and policies of the overall comprehensive plan? Uh, staff did concur that it is, and it is. We've, we've got a, an existing infrastructure, uh, both utilities as well as uh, roads that we are committing to providing um, the future bicycle lane uh, room as well as an additional 25 feet of right of way uh, to be able to meet those uh, goals and objectives. Um, the suburban tier speaks to diversifying residential housing types, and this project certainly uh, would allow for that to happen with the low to medium uh, density designation. Um, is it compatible with the existing land use pl pattern and future land uses? Uh, no staff has mentioned um, that on the other side of Southern Railroad here to the, to the west as a vacant parcel that as anyone has driven Ellis Road recently, we know that is a very active construction site with, with apartments. Uh, so you start to have those apartments here. Of course, to the south of Ellis Road, you've got designated industrial type uses as well as existing high density apartment uses. So what this does is this creates an, an apt transition area between the existing single family along the eastern side of Ellis as you transition into the higher densities, both uh, under construction as well as planned for Ellis Road. You know, Ellis Road was designed as a kind of a transition road between um, providing some supporting residential for the nearby uh, RTP, and this certainly would allow that to happen. Uh, in regards to the zoning, um, we've provided uh, commitments that we believe um, meet the intent um, and allow staff to recommend approval, which they have certainly done so. Um, we're committing uh, to providing, uh, limiting the housing type to townhomes, uh, to providing the bus shelter if they determine that that's necessary, uh, widening Ellis Road for additional left-hand turn lanes that will provide for a safe um, access points into the site along Ellis Road as well as um, providing certain design commitments which we believe will closely mirror and be a nice complement to the existing residences in the area. You know, we're committing to providing what we call craftsman style architecture, you know, using uh, your traditional um, gabled or hipped roof, um, not, uh, we're committing uh, to prohibiting vinyl siding. Um, so we, think we um, really think that that's going to um, guarantee a certain level of quality development in this area. We've tried to be in tune with um, and very cognizant of the existing single family and multifamily that's in the adjacent area. I'll be glad to answer any questions of, staff, of planning Thank commissioners. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom Spaulding. Members of the board, uh, my name is Tom Spaulding. I'm with Spaulding and Norris. Uh, I work alongside of Laura Holloman. We're representing the applicants. Um, just briefly, I'd like to say that um, we've had two neighborhood meetings. Um, we did have quite a bit of uh, um, the neighborhood folks come out. 
um, a lot of the concerns that we heard, um, most of them were, were positive and didn't, didn't um, feel that a townhouse um, project was um, not good for their site, but a lot of the concern had to do with the park area. Um, and just some of the, the concerns of, you know, what you would see at night over in the park area, which really didn't have anything to do with our townhouse site, but that was, seemed to be a, a big portion of the focus of the, um, the neighborhood meeting. Um, I would also like to say that with this project, we are working in conjunction with the city of Durham to extend a gravity sewer line, um, working together, them helping us and, and us helping them, um, them helping us to get uh, help with permission to get underneath the CXX Railroad, which is a long and difficult process, um, and us helping them by getting, you know, actually building the line for them and getting it over and stubbed over to the park, which is much needed because they have a pump station over there that I guess is a regular maintenance problem. So um, we're all working together on that. I'm really here just to answer any questions you have, but um, from an engineering side, that's me. Thank you. Uh, Pam Porter. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Pam Porter, 5011 South Park Drive. I work for Tony Tate Landscape Architecture, and I'm the landscape architect on this project, and we prepared the actual development plans, the, the plan set that you have before you. So I'm here to answer any questions that you might have pertaining to the physical plan set. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, Ben Arings, you have 12 minutes. I live at 2424 Ellis Road at 24 18, which is directly to my left-hand side, is Research Triangle Charter School. At 2415, directly across the street from my house, is several hundred apartments that are being built by Harvard Associates. The gentleman, Tim, who was here and spoke earlier, his company is doing the apartments across the street. To my right-hand side of my house is the Southern Railroad tracks. and. At 20, the 2500 block in which they're trying to get the zoning request changed for the townhomes is like right at a caddy corner from my house. I mean, I, I'm here, the tracks are here, the school's here, and they're trying to build the town, get the zoning request for the townhomes. They're speaking of expanding Ellis Road, a lane four foot for bikes or in a turning lane. Um, I'm, my concern is right now the traffic with the apartments are under construction. They have not been opened yet. For, for the, tra the traffic from the school beside my house, the apartments across the street, and the townhomes that are going to be built, I do not think that just adding a center lane and a turning lane and a four foot wide for bikes is going to in no way help the traffic that is out there as of right now. You cannot get out of my driveway from seven to nine in the morning and from four and six in the evenings. And also with this road expansion that they're talking about, I'm concerned is are they gonna widen the road over the railroad tracks as well? Or in, in the, the septic line, the sewage line, which is not out there as of right now, which they have been having troubles with. I mean, they spoke on having a hard time with the railroad, but it's, it's been more than a railroad company. It's been years and years that they've been trying to get a, an acceptable sewer line in on Ellis Road, and it has failed through time and time again. The apartments that are across the street are having to pump it to a pump it station back toward the Glover Road area. Um, I just wish you would take into consideration before you change this zone request the heavy, heavy amount of traffic of grade school of, of children directly beside the house that frequently walk up and down the road. And if, if they were to try to put a bike lane, in, that, a bike, bicyclist would get ran over on Ellis Road. Um, the traffic is just that bad. Also, GlaxoSmithKline's headquarters is on Ellis Road. If you could just imagine the traffic that is going to be created with the addition of the townhomes, with the opening of the several hundred apartments, 
Uh, it, it's Ellis Road is a, right now is a two lane road and in no way, shape, form or fashion can it handle any additional traffic. Thank you for your time, you all. All right, thank you. Are there other members from the audience wishing to speak to this item? Are there other members from the audience wishing to speak to this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do I have commissioners wishing to speak? Okay, I got Commissioner Miller, Commissioner Freeman, Commissioner Hammer, Whitley, Brian, Johnson. Okay, uh, Commissioner Freeman. Thank you. Uh, the first question, I guess, is for the applicant's representatives. So based on the gentleman, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name is Reams. Reams, Mr. Reams, question about widening the road over the railroad tracks. Is that part of this plan? I didn't see. Sure. Uh, no, it is not currently. Um, our, our road improvements would go as far as um, on your plan, you see the site access point number three. And, that, and these recommendations were based on uh, working with Bill Judge and his comments throughout the, the review process. Then my second question was, was it set already for the plan, or f I guess an agreement set for the plans to move forward with CSX, or is this just something you're working on right now? That is something that we're working on. That agreement is in, the utility agreement is in draft form right now. So we are working through uh, with Public Works on that in conjunction with our annexation request. Uh, but we do have um, a level of understanding with the staff um, that our sewer alignment would, would require a crossing of the railroad, obviously. So if it doesn't go through, then you could, this project wouldn't move forward? Right, we, we need utilities. Okay. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, while you're at the microphone, Ms. Holman, uh, uh, I appreciate very much the uh, design commitment that you put in the uh, development plan concerning a mix of architectural styles. It's obvious that you read the comprehensive plan. I appreciate that. Um, our comprehensive plan in, is in that same chapter, in Chapter 4, has a policy against repetitious placement of garages. Do you have any solution for that? Uh, not at this time. Uh, we, we do not um, have a set elevation in mind. Uh, what we were trying to do was, was mirror the intent of the comprehensive plan and certainly establish a general level of quality. So I, cannot, I can't tell you today what that exact design will look like in terms of repetition, repetitious garages. Can you tell me how many units you plan to put in a building, what the max would be? And what the mix of units would be, one and two bedrooms, three bedrooms. Do you know any of that? Not at this point, no. Um, and you don't have any committed element that you'd like to, to uh, proffer concerning uh, avoiding repetitious placement of garages or, or avoiding uh, garage prominence, garage door prominence? I'm looking at my client as you're talking. Why don't you go this. talk to your client? So <laughs> client and confer I, with him. And I, I'll pass this off to somebody else, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Hyman. Um, let's see. I, I think I'd like to address this to the applicant, any member of the applicant, because uh, I heard uh, some comments about the infra. You know, I'm always concerned when there are questions about infrastructure, and in this particular case, it's the sewage, uh, the, the sewage system itself, and, and working with the city and getting some corrections if, uh, or, or adding to what's already there. So my question is, um, if you aren't able to get you know, this, this level of infrastructure 
to a, you know, a place where it supports all of this, because it sounds like there's a lot already out there, and the sewage system is already overloaded, and so there have to be some corrections in order to do that. So when you say you're working with the city uh, to do that, can you tell me a little bit more about how sure. that's being done? That's, that's a very good question. Um, we have several different ways we can get sewer to our property. Um, when, when the project was first reviewed, it was recommended that we get up with the public works because they knew that they had a pump station over in the park that they'd like to get offline. So we had some joint meetings and came to a mutual agreement that it would be beneficial to both of us. We thought that we could put the line where the city of Durham wanted it, and in that way, uh, it would be able to take the pump station offline in the park and be able to get to our property. So we, we had several different options, but we chose to work with the city. Um, the benefit back to us is if, if the city is involved, the application goes through a little bit faster with the CXX Railroad. For somebody on the outside, it, it's usually a six to nine month process. If the city of Durham's involved, it's a little bit quicker. Um, and that, that's, that's basically it. We chose to work together, and it's so far everything's going well. So. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Whitley? Please come back. <laughs> um, I'm a little curious. <clears throat> Um, you are in the county, and you you're asking for city services. Um, and there's a bargain being compromised. I mean, being negotiated. That's what I'm hearing. Is that correct? Um, I guess we're just we're, we're entering into an agreement where we would put we would build the sewer line where the the city wants it and make an extension up to um, where their pump pump station is in return they are going to assist us with getting the CSX uh, bore underneath the railroad well I think I might like that as long as um, the residence and your property is is um, meanable to the idea of coming into the city. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear very well. You are in the county. Mm -hmm. um, will your property be um, become property of the city as well? Yes, we would be annexed in. It is okay. our goal. I'm liking it better and better. Now, I've heard that um, you're willing to make a proper to put a bus, a bus shelter. Hi. Yes, that's correct. Are you committing to that now? Yes, that is part of our... Uh, text commitments that's shown on the cover sheet of the development plan and it's written I know that there's um, already a bus shelter planned at immediately adjacent um, in the apartments but we are committing that if uh, that to working with uh, the public transit authority and if and if they deem that um, a requirement we have no problem putting that shelter in I have a question for staff Um, they don't know how they're going to address the problem of garages. They have not completed the negotiation for sewage. Um, and they're not sure what elevation this property going to be developed on with. Why is this before us tonight? 
Sure. Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Uh, Mr. Wibley, so to address your first issue regarding the garages, um, it, it's up to the applicant whether or not they want to provide that information at this time. It's not anything that's required by the ordinance for them to sh depict an elevation of what the ultimate product is going to look like. That's typically something that's handled at the site plan level um, stage. Um, regarding the sewage issue, so there is a pending annexation with this, as I'm sure you all know now. Um, that is something that is within the purview of the city council, um, and it's kind of separate of this process, even though they are somewhat linked. So the extension agreement, in, anytime there's an annexation petition, there's almost always an extension agreement. That's something that is developed between the staff and the applicant, and then the council approves that. So in order for this project to su succeed, that will have to be approved, um, and usually these are heard in tandem at the city council. So any previous annexations that this board has, or zoning cases this board has heard with annexations, that's been the case. So there, there may not be sewer there today, but the plan is that in the future there will be adequate sewer service to serve the project. And that is what the applicant is currently working with Public Works um, on ensuring that the agreement is um, sufficient for review by council in this case is ready to be heard so um, how many months delay do you think this out uh, this board needs in order to vote on something um, that would happen you know it, it's ironic that staff would bring us a proposal knowing full well that the development part of it is incomplete. Mm -hmm. And um, and why do we vote on incomplete proposals? Sure. Um, so I can't advise the, the board in terms of a deferral. I think that would be something for the commission to discuss amongst themselves in uh, regards to the completeness of the case. Um, again, the extension agreement annexation is not in the purview of the Planning Commission. That's something at the discretion of the, the Durham City Council. Um, so in that regard, I don't, you know, staff will take that item to council when it's ready. Um, obviously, it is needed for this project to go forward. The applicant understands that the past history has been to let the case go, continue to move through the process. While they work that item out, Again, it's a separate item uh, from this request. So you're telling me the sewage is not part of your? Period? It is not a part of the zoning case for the plan amendment in front of the planning commission. It is a separate case, which goes directly to the Durham City Council. Thank you. You're welcome, Commissioner Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a couple of questions for the applicant. Uh, I happened to be out there at the site at the time when a fairly long freight train went down the railroad track, and I noticed some noise, and that leads me to the question, is there going to be any additional buffering along the side that's adjacent to the railroad track? Sure. At this point, uh, we haven't allocated for that. Um, certainly, in this case, the railroad, just like with any other in this adjacent area where where residences have been built, um, that is an existing condition, and you know we're we're acknowledging uh, to move forward uh, with residential development, knowing that there is an adjacent uh, railroad there. Uh, we'll certainly. Um, you know, there's a number of tree save areas that'll be um, in that, um, around that area, but in terms of a set buffer at this point, no. Okay. Um, Mr. Wiggins started at his presentation by noting that the city of Durham was the applicant. I believe I got that right. And so that leads to the next question. Will there be any affordable housing in this development? Sure. Now again, uh, we are not we are not the builder, um, but at this point, uh, we have no we have no um, no plans to to commit to a, a set affordable housing component. I'm a little surprised that the city of Durham will be the applicant and not want to see some affordable housing. That's just comment on my part. Uh, 
I do have a question for transportation staff. It was noted in the report that NCDOT had prepared this City of Durham traffic separation study that recommends that Ellis Road be bridged over the railroad track, although there's no funding to do that at this point in time. But if that ever came to pass, would building this bridge have any impact on the site access points off of Ellis Road? Um. Yes, Bill Judge with Transportation again. We advised the applicant based on that uh, traffic separation study that showed the uh, future bridge basically in a slight adjustment in the alignment of Ellis Road um, in order to basically maximize the distance from the railroad corridor. They adjusted the access point, the, the access point closest to the railroad to shift it further away so that the widening and all those improvements could be made without encroaching into the railroad. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I just would like to um, know if uh, one uh, representative of the applicant could speak to uh, the issue of the traffic that the citizen, uh, Mr. Is it Reams? Reams. Mr. Reams uh, brought up in regards to uh, given, I know this is, we're looking at this as a, a project within itself, but when we put together the bigger picture of what's happening around this project, do you have any concerns about the quality of life or the feasibility of what you're trying to do with this development, given what you presented as um, mitigation transport, uh, uh, issues regarding the transportation? Do you feel that that's going to be enough to address the, the, the larger community in which you're uh, proposing this development site? Thank you for your question. Um, you know, basically, whenever uh, rezoning um, is set forth, we go through um, a dialogue with, with transportation, with Bill Judge, about moving forward with is a TA required? Do we, do we trip the necessary um, amount of daily trips and, and peak hour trips to require a traffic impact analysis to be done? We did not. We were grossly underneath that impact to require a TIA. So with that said, uh, we move forth then through the, through months and months of, of staff comments, we, we move forth with, with transportation's recommendations uh, based on what uh, they feel our impacts will be and how we can, um, what they feel like will be a sufficient level of service for Ellis Road with regards to adding our cars as a result of the project, and we've done that. Uh, we've committed fully to the requirements that they brought forth during our review process. So yes, I would say that we do feel that our proposed impacts will result in an overall uh, harmonious uh, design and evolution of Ellis Road at this point without, uh, to Commissioner Bryan's point, uh, the schedule for the approval of the overall um, funding and approval of um, Ellis Road's um, improvements uh, that are currently unfunded. And we have, as uh, Mr. Judge stated, we have um, allowed those improvements to happen uh, very easily and will be done very fluidly because we have planned our access points to allow for that to happen without any impacts to uh, future development. I would, I would just like to add that, you know, Durham Expressway is a, is a major traffic mover, and you have to get the traffic to that to keep it moving, and Ellis Road is certainly one of those collector roads, and the city of Durham has had their eye on this area for a very long time, and so they're going to tell us what we need to build, what they think is adequate for the future so that they can move traffic safely. And so we really don't have too much of a say. They're gonna tell us what they feel is adequate and we will build it per their specifications. And that's kind of where this project falls in. It's not a, a large, large project, but we are gonna do our fair share of road improvements. 
Commissioner Freeman? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I understand for clarity. I was trying to ask Tom. But this is a 25, I guess it's a question for staff. This is a 25-acre property, right? And mm -hmm. you're trying to set up a residential townhouse development on it. There's no builder lined up. We mm -hmm. don't have affordable housing in place. Mm -hmm. And you're working on a CSX agreement, but we don't know if there will be one. Mm -hmm. And you want to annex a part of Durham County. Mm -hmm. All of this right now. Yes, um, so a couple of points of clarification. Um, regarding the affordable housing, so the, the council recommendation regarding that is that they're, they're aiming for 15% within a certain distance of transit, proposed transit stops. This property is not within proximity to one of those transit stops. Additionally, the city is the applicant for the initial zoning piece, which is associated with the rezoning. Um, that is, uh, the initial zoning is required as per state law. Um, it's really just a separate application. The Ellis Road, the representatives here in front of you tonight are the actual applicants for the rezoning piece. Um, in regards to the, the sewage issue, again, that is something that's at the council discretion um, and is separate of this request. There is available capacity within the system for this. It's just a matter of working out an agreement that works best for the city and the applicant in order to provide services for the site and future development within the area. Um, it's historical practice, um, and I don't think it is anything that's uncommon that there have been cases that you all have seen which probably do not have a completed extension agreement in front of them, and you've still recommended or made recommendations on those cases. Um, and, so. I mean, I've just, just in, based on your comment, mm -hmm. going forward, do you think that, that it's going to become like quick pro quo that, you know, rather than having a developer and a builder mm -hmm. involved, you'll just have developers involved so they don't have to make any commitments to housing or? Um, I mean, I can't advise on that. In, in terms of commitments, um, that's at the applicant's discretion if they want proper certain commitments. Um, and you know, it is not a requirement at this time for them to have a builder on hand um, to receive a recommendation for a project that they propose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With respect to affordable housing, I fully understand what the city wants to see in relationship to transit stations, which may or may not happen depending on the how the General Assembly behaves. But I believe we need affordable housing all over Durham. And I think we're attempting, Durham is attempting to get it established in more places than just around transit stations. Additional comments? Commissioner Miller? Uh, Commissioner Hornbroker? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think I know I'm the new one on the block, but uh, I, right now, uh, I think it's, it's a good concept and a good plan, but I do have a problem with not having the CSX agreement in there for the uh, utility easement. And I, I know that uh, that may, dealing with a railroad, I can see we're six months down the road, there may st still be a problem trying to get that worked out. And uh, I just think we need to make a motion, or I will make a motion at this time that we table this, a vote not, on this for at not, least 60 okay. days. Not a, okay, at the appropriate time. It's not, now is not the time. Okay, well I said I'm in. So Commissioner Miller, you had a comment. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to give the developer's representatives an opportunity to address the question I asked earlier about repetitious garage placement. Thank you. Uh, I was waiting patiently to, to answer that question. Um, to answer your question, I did briefly concur with, with the developer, and I think everyone knows up there now uh, the point has been driven home that we do not have a specific uh, builder at this time. However, what uh, staff, Durham staff, requires of us, uh, of any case, you know, it's, it's relatively common. They actually do not want to see exact building elevations as a committed element. You know, that's when you start to have, you know, no wiggle room if there wants to be, you know, shutters or shake accents. Um, you know, you start to do all that and then you can't because you have that set 
elevation in mind. So that is why we offered uh, the, the design commitments that I talked about. Uh, with regards to the garages, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, of course, uh, townhomes being, you know, um, a set, set size amount, you know, what's the average townhome, 26 foot, you know, foot in width, you know, you're, you're going to have um, garages, you know, if, if the builder builds them, then they're going to be, they're going to have that, um, that feature. Uh, we are um, willing to, to offer up that they will be um, in, in variation of design and, in, and be um, decorative um, in nature. Uh, so you would have a possibility of what I mean by decorative. You'd have um, you know, windows um, in the garages as well as uh, what I would call um, carriage accents where you have um, the hardware where it looks, where it looks like a um, where you're opening them and it's not just the bland um, aluminum garage door. Commissioner Gibbs. Oh, I'm okay. Hold on, Miss Commissioner Gibbs. I did have no, no. Sorry, Commissioner Gibbs. I guess I was first. Um, question for staff. I actually have two questions based off this last response. It sounds like there was a new proffer mm -hmm. on the floor here. Uh, my understanding is that general practice is when that is the case, uh, staff recommends that we uh, set this aside for 60 days. Yeah, Jacob Wiggins, the planning department. Um, yes, typically that is the recommendation. I would ask the applicant if they want to um, confirm whether or not they are voluntarily proffering something at this hearing, and if so, to, to stay so on the record. Uh, I guess I will ask that question to the applicant then. Is that a specific proffer that you are adding? That's something that we're willing to voluntarily commit to, yes. Um, can we get some clarification on exactly what the proffer is? Sure. I think the proffer is that um, garage doors if if applicable and if if present on units will be uh, decorative in nature um, including but not limited to uh, windows and um, decorative garage uh, carriage door features and I mean I'm just going to say that uh, I hope that in the 60 days I don't know what that language means necessarily and I hope that in the 60 days you can work with the applicant to refine that to something that might be enforceable I'm not sure maybe that is enforceable but um, is that the general plan yeah certainly staff will work with the applicant to ensure that that um, is something uh, that is enforceable mm -hmm. so we definitely appreciate uh, the consideration the other question that I had for staff uh, was regarding the um, uh, CSX agreement. Mm -hmm. I'm not really, what is, do you understand what the process is for that and how that goes, gets approved? I'm not sure. Um, sure. I mean, it sounds like to me that if this zoning, sounds like we, regardless of what happens here, city council would not approve this zoning unless the CX, CSX agreement is in place and the annexation was approved. Is that the case? Right, yeah, so I, I can't say for sure what council will do, but I think it's highly unlikely that they would approve a rezoning and annexation petition if there's not an associated extension agreement. So the extension agreement is something that is attached to the annexation petition. Mm -hmm. It's process completely separate of this. Um, we typically, you know, so by state law, annexations are effective quarterly. Um, right. So there's only four times a year which they can become effective. So what we allow applicants to do is kind of to move the process forward, work on the rezoning and the annexation at the same time with the idea that they can come together at council when council is ready to hear the annexation piece, that all the items required for that will be satisfied. So the council can make a decision on the complete item. So at this case, we're letting them come before the planning commission to get a recommendation on the zoning piece solely. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. uh, if, if this case were tabled today for mm -hmm. 60 days, it's unlikely that city council would take any action on the case without? 
Uh, yeah, I, I think it's unlikely that yeah. the council is going to consider the annexation piece. It's certainly possible they still may, um, right? Without the associated rezoning, uh, okay. But that would also move their effective date. Into the nearest uh, effective date is September 30th, and that likely pushes this case back to becoming effective uh, December 30th, 2016. But the general practice of city council is to hear all of this at once: the annexation, the uh, extension agreement, and mm -hmm. the rezoning. Yeah, typically that is the case. Okay, thank you, Jacob. I'm sorry. I'm Commissioner sorry. Gibbs. Can I add something to oh, that, yeah. Mr. I'm, I apologize, okay. but I wanted just to reiterate what Jacob just said, but add to that, uh, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. You you will see these types of um, items as a, they call them consolidated items at the council level because everything comes together and it's consolidated at the very end for approval at one place in time. So um, I, I can. Uh, agree with Jacob we cannot speak on the council's behalf as to how they would handle it if for some reason these were to get fragmented or splintered but I have not seen that happen in the time I've been here they're always consolidated and going at the same time so just wanted to add that for the record if that helps thank you Commissioner Gibbs well <clears throat> it seems that there are so many things uh, so many aspects of this uh, one thing is dependent on another and on another and this and nothing is going to move forward until everything is settled as far as the developer, the design team, and all of that. Uh, I would think in order for the design team to move forward with their design work and pursuing the CSX uh, easement, and they're also going to have to work with the city almost at the same time, uh, I think they should be free to go ahead with that because uh, what, what, what we do tonight is not going to affect it, I don't think. Uh, as far as uh, design and garage location, I have, I have a real problem with, with that. Uh, and I've said this before. and. Some of the designers down here know my, my feelings on it too. Uh, I don't think we, we, nor the city, nor the county or anybody else should be dictating design to this, uh, to this detail. Uh, we, can have, we can have some overall desires, but to, di to dictate design on whether and where a garage is going to go, it makes sense it's going to face the street. That's, and how, what kind of door you put up there, and it, it doesn't matter. They're going to design something to sell. But I'm, I'm getting off on, I got so many things going through my head, but I really think we should approve this project going forward and they can pursue whatever they need to pursue uh, unencumbered by some other aspect that hasn't been settled yet. Uh, it's like a juggling act. But I have one question about traffic, and I guess it would be to Mr. Judge. Uh, does, will there be that much traffic impact uh, along Ellis Road with this development and I know you when you include the apartments or whatever that's uh, on the other side of the road and all up and down uh, did, um, are we nearing the maximum capacity is what I'm saying and it's probably in our report, but I apologize. I did not read yeah. that detailed. Um, yes, uh, the, uh, the estimated, in the current, I guess, capacity is about 12,700, and the, the current volume is about 11,000. Uh, the impact from this project is, um, let's see, an additional 994, but not all of those will be necessarily assigned to one section of Ellis. Um, probably more than 50% of them would likely be um, geared going across the railroad tracks back towards the freeway. 
and with the apartment project, uh, well, not the apartments, but the commercial project you heard earlier today and the current zoning on that parcel, they are required to basically provide an additional through lane um, mm -hmm. for that portion of the frontage so there'll, there'll be adequate capacity. Well, it looks to me like they have, they're planning to provide that, uh, uh, but I, I, I would vote for sending this forward. Additional comments? Commissioner uh, Whitley. I appreciate um, everything that my, my um, comrades have stated here today, but here's where I'm at. We don't know what's gonna go on that property. So it doesn't really matter um, what design we talk about, you know? Um, they're asking for commercial and, they, and, and, and um, industrial. Anything can go on that property. We don't know who the builders are. We don't know what the builders gonna, um, gonna ask in the end. And we're asked to be able to vote on something that we don't have a clue what the outcome's gonna be. You know, um, there are too many things that are not answered. And I think um, for me, I, I, I don't know about my fellow commissioners, but too many questions. And to vote to approve something without knowing what we are approving doesn't seem right. Um, I will vote against this because I think it's too early and, um, and we need to know more than we presently know. Okay. Uh, just one comment. The motion that the chair will accept would be an extension of 60 days, not for a motion for approval or denial. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Bryan. Well, in lieu of the fact that we had another uh, commitment per offered, which seems to need massaging in terms of language, and of everything some of my fellow commissioners have said about unknowns, I move that in the case of A160003 that we reopen the public hearing and continue the matter for two cycles or 60 days. So I would like to companion, com companion cases, both the zoning and the text. Okay, uh, to, for cases A160003 and Z160004, I move that we reopen the public hearing and continue both matters for two cycles or roughly 60 days. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay, uh, is there any uh, one that doesn't understand the motion that's on the floor? Okay, if not, the motion is for a continuance of, for two cycles, A16 quadruple and Z16 quadzip quad, well, zero, 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 0004. Motion by Brian, second by Hornbrook. Okay. So, could I hear a uh, roll call vote on the motion? Mr. Brian? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? No. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? No. Motion carries nine to three. Okay. We will now uh, open the public hearing on South Point Trails 2 
A16 quadruple 02 and Z16 quadruple 03. Laura Woods, Planning Department. And this is South Point Trails 2. The applicant in this case is Robert Schunk, representing Stewart Engineering. This is a city jurisdiction. And the request is um, from low density residential to low medium density residential. This is within the suburban tier. It is also within the uh, Falls Lake, Jordan Lake B watershed protection overlay. And the site is approximately 27 acres. This is an unusual case um, in that the proposal um, for the plan amendment would match the existing zoning. The existing zoning is actually more intense than the future uh, adopted future land use. The site is located at um, North Carolina Highway 751, just south of its intersection with Massey Chapel Road. It's on the western side. And uh, as you see, it's currently low density residential, which uh, matches some of the property to the north. It is almost, it, well, it is surrounded on two sides by recreation open space. I believe that's mostly, or perhaps all Corps of Engineers land. Most of the land to the east is also recreation open space controlled by the Corps of Engineers. Again, here are four criteria. Um, we look to see whether the proposed change is consistent with adopted plans, or whether it is compatible with existing uses or the designated future uses, whether it would create substantial adverse impacts, and whether the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed change. In this case, the plan amendment is necessitated because they have requested a change to the development plan of the existing zone. Uh, we evaluated this proposal um, based on these comprehensive plan policies. And um, there is an error in your staff report, I must admit to, um, as occasionally happens. Um, the corresponding table to this slide in your report states that to the north. Um, Ms. Wu, could you speak into yes. the mic? We can't hear um, Beg your pardon. I'm getting used to the new mic. Um, yes, there is an error in your staff report. Uh, the corresponding table to this slide uh, says to the north is vacant if you know the area or if you bothered to look at our aerial photo. It most assuredly is not vacant. There is a substantial uh, place of worship to the north and just to the west of that are a couple of single family homes. Now to the east is mostly vacant and to the south is vacant and the west is vacant. All right, um, as I say, uh, this is an unusual case in that the existing um, future land use is less intense than the approved zoning on the case. Um, its approved zoning allows for um, approximately 45 townhomes. And as I understand the development plan that you'll consider later, uh, the applicant wishes to modify it slightly to allow for the owner of the property to build a single family home. Um, the proposed change is, um, does not create substantial adverse impacts. The proposed change is reasonably compatible with surrounding land uses and the subject site certainly will accommodate the proposed um, land use ca category. So uh, staff um, surmises uh, or concludes that uh, they have met the four criteria, therefore staff recommends approval. That concludes my staff report. Thank you. Good evening, Kyle Taylor with the Planning Department. 
Uh, I'm presenting zoning case Z16000003, South Point Trails 2. Uh, the applicant for this uh, project is Jeff Gilman with uh, 751 LLC. This project is within the city's jurisdiction. This is a modification of an existing development plan. The request is to go from an existing PDR 5.500 to another PDR 5.500. The acreage of this property is 27.10 acres. And the proposed use for this project is to reduce the number of townhome unit count from 149 to 148 and add one single family home residential lot. And that is what that is. Um, uh, there are two updates to this project, by the way. Um, there is a typo on the actual development plan itself. There's a text commitment for impervious surface and also impervious surface shown on the proposed conditions. Uh, the proposed conditions page has the correct percentage for the impervious surface, which says that it's 55%. Uh, the text commitment shows that it's 48%. Uh, I have contacted the applicant, and the applicant will be updating that information. Um, Additionally, there is a new uh, commitment for affordable housing that's updated from the version that you guys have, and that is also a change from the previous version approved uh, when the case was last heard. And I'll get into more detail on that when we get to the uh, text commitment slides. So the site is located, is uh, comprised of 34 parcels located at 8512 NC 751 Highway West on the west side of 751 Highway, north of Stagecoach Road and south of Macy Chapel Road. The site is located in the suburban tier in the FJB Watershed Overlay Protection District. Uh, this project does meet the requirements for the PDR zoning district with an acreage of 27.10 acres and a maximum dwelling units per acre of 5.500. Uh, this site is currently vacant, however, a townhome house development has been approved for this site and the lots uh, have already been platted. There is a trail easement on this property. There's also a small natural inventory, nature, natural inventory site location on the site that is not being affected by this rezoning. And that's at the bottom right hand corner if you guys were curious. Uh, the proposed conditions for this page does uh, meet the requirements of the development plan for a PDR zoning district. The proposed conditions commit to access points, location of an easement for the Eagle Spruce Trail, uh, buffer in excess of ordinate standards, a building and parking envelope, and the newly created area committed for a single family home, which is to the left of the uh, Eagle Spruce chair that you see there on purple on the screen currently. So they do meet the minimum commitments for the PDR zoning district with 149 residential units maximum, two external site access points, two greenway access points, impervious surface maximum of 55%, which I talked about earlier, uh, tree coverage of 20%, which translates to approximately 5.42 acres. Uh, graphically, they commit to the location of tree preservation areas, location of access points, project boundary buffers, building and parking envelope, and the location of the greenway. Uh, these are the text commitments associated with this plan. There's a number of them, most of which are not being ch changed from previously approved. Uh, the first commitment's actually being updated on this project because the contribution to the public schools has actually been completed. Uh, the second commitment you see there in the bold is actually the commitment I was referring to earlier uh, that they are proposing now, and uh, we have received this and has been vetted by the planning department. This is the commitment to replace commitment two as far as affordable housing. Um, it's on the screen. I'll leave that up there for a second for you guys. Okay. Uh, they also do have a number of roadway improvements that they're committing to as well. They're outlined on this slide as well as in the plan on your uh, staff report and the development plan. Uh, again, they're committing to a four foot asphalt for bike lane and construction of a six foot tall masonry wall with stucco finish along the tree coverage boundary in the north corner of the site indicated on a DP20 uh, in construction of the first uh, certification of occupation. Uh, the rest of these commitments have remained as uh, approved. However, that last one is uh, the improver surface commitment that I mentioned earlier that they will be updating. 
That should be 55? Correct, yes, it currently states 48, it should be 55. Uh, they have committed to a few design commitments uh, that include roof designs, building materials, designated architectural features. Those can be found on this slide and also on the development plan and the staff report. Uh, this request is not consistent with the future land use map, which ind indicates this area as low density residential. Uh, however, a plan amendment case has been submitted for that and Laura just presented that case. Uh, staff has determined that this proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan and policies on this, uh, shown on this slide in the staff report. However, it is not consistent with the, comp with the future land use map as stated previously. And as such, staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And staff is available for any questions. Thank you. I have three people signed up to speak. Uh, Finesse? Finesse, are you speaking in favor or against? Okay, so I have two people signed up to speak both in favor. George Stanzia, Stanzia. Yeah, George Stanzia, five minutes. Okay, Ken Spalding, you have 10 minutes between the two of you. Both speaking in favor of the project. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ken Spalling, I and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, I represent the applicant in this matter. And as planning staff has pointed out, uh, this is sort of one in which now we're making sure that uh, the comprehensive plan is consistent with the rezoning that we had already had. This was done back in around July, I think, of 2012. Uh, we got it approved at that time. I think staff pointed out that there was a uh, the lot is vacant now, it's not vacant. We already have town homes going up uh, under construction. Uh, and I want to point out that um, the comp plan will now become, uh, upon your approval, uh, low medium density residential. Uh, the 149 town homes, we're seeking for them to be 148 with the single family home that is my understanding the developer uh, is doing something a little different. Most of the time people want to leave Durham and live in Florida. He lives in Florida and I think he wants to build a home here in Durham. So that's Durham pride. Uh, and I want to say that uh, um, not only they're under construction, but uh, uh, this is a project that unfortunately is, you know, I, I drive by there quite a bit. One of the things that bothers me is that I, we don't link up our uh, sidewalks until you have new developments and then they link it up and you, the city's not necessarily doing it on its own. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna have a situation out there where people cannot do the walking to get to South Point. However, it's about a mile, but I do two miles every day just to try to stay healthy. But uh, take a mile to get all the way up to, uh, from this development to uh, the first bus stop. And so I think that's important when George explains the text amendment that's been changed on what we want to do uh, and I just want to point out to you that I think not only is this going to be make the entire project both zoning and plan the planning amendment consistent but I think that uh, it will be a very continued pro good project for Durham. Had it been five minutes? Yeah. No, two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. They get five each. <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you want to, if you want to continue. <laughs> it's all for the best. <laughs> okay, George. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, just a, a couple of things um, as it relates to the impervious coverage. We, we are, it is 55%. Uh, and then I, I'm not sure I need to say anything about the text amendment I think you have the the text amendment in front of you right which has yes, been approved did. by the planning director yes so that's we're here for any questions the new committed element, the new committed element yeah um, can staff clarify are you speaking of the affordable housing element yes yes we have it if anyone needs us to read it back for the record we'll be glad to do that just to clarify if you need more clarification so Kyle can do that okay 
So we're here for any questions. Thank you. Are there anyone in the audience that wish to speak to this item? Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Are there anyone in the audience who wish to speak to this item? If not, then I'm going to bring it back before the commissioners and then I will allow you to update us on the text element. Yep. So the new text commitment uh, reads, the developer shall provide a payment to the city of Durham of $15,000 per affordable units for a total of five units pr previously committed to and approved in the original rezoning request dated July 10th to uh, 2012 for the purpose of affordable housing. Payment shall be made prior to the final site plan approval. And I'm going to flip back to the slide of my presentation, so it'll be behind you guys as well if you want to okay. look at it again. So, do we have people wishing to speak to this item? All right, Commissioner Miller, anyone else on this side? Commissioner Freeman? Commissioner Bryant? Commissioner Goosh? Uh, Commissioner Goosh? Uh, I think both the planning staff and the applicant mentioned this is kind of a different case um, and uh, I'm, I, I think I like it I want to make sure um, first I will say I absolutely love that someone wants the property owner wants to move to Durham and live in Durham uh, I want to live in Durham too it's a great place um, aside from that so the previous uh, the previous plan uh, I guess you basically what's happened is the uh, building envelope, building parking envelope was changed on the development plan to allow for, I assume, where the single family home will go, which I think is going to be to the left of the trail, or to left is not a direction. West. To the, yeah, west, west of the trail. I was looking for the compass. Um, and it's like where you're standing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, previously, that area was a tree coverage area, um, and now uh, it is being change to allow for building a uh, parking envelope. How much tree coverage is being lost as a result? There, there's none. The tree coverage on both development plans are the same. You're just moving the tree coverage? It's, being, it's, it's just moved, yes. Yeah, I decided I like it. <laughs> Commissioner Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a minor point on your proposed conditions. Uh, we've been told that you're going from 149 units to 148, but your plan still says 149. That is well, that's, it's 149 townhomes plus one single family. Okay, I, it would help to clarify that for I, people like me that don't always take this stuff in. Gotcha. And, the other thing, I just want to make sure I understand your latest tax commitment. Is this payment per affordable housing unit in lieu of actually providing affordable housing units? That's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. Thank you. I, just, I also want a point of clarification. Um, for, I'm going to test my understanding with the staff. Uh, Article 3 of the UDO says that uh, this, we're not supposed to change zoning if it's inconsistent with the comprehensive plan as the planning director has determined. In this case, though, in 2012, it appears like we did that. We, we turned down the comprehensive plan amendment, but we passed the rezoning. So actually, technically, we have a, uh, a violation of our own code. So this plan amendment will put us right to that. Uh, Grace Smith with the planning department. That is correct, Mr. Miller. That the, the this will the fix the, the Article actually, Three problem. Yes, it would bring the property in compliance with the uh, future land use and the comprehensive plan. And then, with regard to the uh, zoning change and the te the change in the text of the text commitment in the development plan for this, originally what was proposed was that five units out of the townhouse units 
would be affordable at 80 percent AMI. That is correct on the original the 2012. Right so that means that we would sell the developer proposed to sell those to a class of persons who were whose income at the time of purchase was 80 percent of the uh, uh, average median or the the median income and then uh, but after the point of sale the units entered the, the general marketplace and they would not necessarily continue to be affordable. Is that right? Correct. That, the way that proffer read it, it just basically stated that it would, um, do you have that? Do you have, I've actually got it, we brought it with us just in case that question came up. So let me just make sure. All right, so number two, yes. So it actually read exactly like this. The developer shall provide a minimum of five units that are affordable to 80% of the median income the, the affordable housing unit shall be incorporated throughout the project and shall not be distinguishable from market rate units throughout the location, grouping, design, or other physical characteristics. But there so was no right. time commitment. There was, there was no, no device included correct. that would say that for a period of time these units somehow had to stay affordable or, or, or available only to a certain class of buyers. Yeah, there's nothing stated in that commitment about that. And so now what's proposed in lieu of that is a essentially a $75,000 payment um, uh, instead of those five 80 percent point of sale affordable units. Is that, that did, is correct. did I get it? You got it. All right, thanks. Right, and then in the interim, when the D plan that they actually submitted that ended up in your packets had another yeah, had a different had a per different unit, and that equaled 74.5, but what they're doing now actually equals 75, so but you got it from the very beginning. That's what the proper said. Oh, I have my moments. Actually, I think George tried to explain it to me, and I just wanted to make yes. sure I understood. Yes. And I wanted to say to my fellow commission members, I think this is a better deal for the city. Uh, five units that are 80% AMI at point of sale only is not not much of an affordable housing commitment. $75,000 that might be applied elsewhere in a place where we need the affordable housing more than we need it on Highway 751 where there's not even a bus route in my opinion, is a better program. Uh, uh, to fix the Article Three problem, I'm going to vote for the plan amendment. And I think to, in my opinion, to get a better deal for the city on affordable housing, I'm going to vote for the rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Freeman. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Commissioner Harris. But, uh, Chair Harris. Uh, thank you, Tom, for clarifying all of that. That was, that was most of my question. The other question I had was about the trailway, I guess. Is that already existing? <clears throat> and then if it's not, what would it be made of? Is it like going to be an asphalt? Well, it's a city trail. Okay. It will be a city trail. It will be a yes. city trail. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I guess that would be a question for staff. Do you know what that trailway would be made of by any chance? It's not specified on the development plan. It would be up to the city for that. The only thing they've done at this point, and they've actually already done it, is uh, actually dedicate an easement for that. Okay. And they have already done that. Yeah. Okay. I'll get with the city on that. I'm sorry? I'll get with the city on that then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case A16. 000024 to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. second. Motion by Miller, second by uh, <laughs> Whitley, Commissioner Whitley, that we send uh, case A16 quadruple 02 to City Council with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. Motion carries unanimously 12 to 0. Thank you. Uh, we will now open the public hearing. Next case. Oh, I'm sorry. Case. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Planning Commission send case Z. 16000003 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Vice Chair Hyman, that we send zoning case 16 quadruple zero three to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? 
Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Willie? Yes. Motion carries unanimous, 12 to zero. Now we will uh, go to item 5D, Beth Path Village 4, A16 quadruple 04, and zoning case 16 quadruple 08. Ms. Laura Wood. This is our last plan amendment for this, e this evening. And this is Beth page four. The applicant in this case is Bob Zumwalt representing McAdams and Company. Uh, it is within the city's jurisdiction. The request is from industrial to low medium density residential. It is within the suburban tier and the acreage is just under eight acres. Uh, this is actually two separate parcels um, at some distance from one another. They're currently industrial. And the um, location is uh, just off of Page Road, a bit to the west, um, and a bit north of Chin Page Road. Again, here are four policy um, criteria. I don't think I need to reiterate them, but if you, if you wish, I, I shall. And these are the policies upon which we evaluated uh, this request. Uh, the western parcel uh, to the north is vacant. The area to the east is vacant, to the south vacant, and to the west vacant. The eastern parcel and to the north of the parcel is vacant. The east is single family residential to the south and to the west are also vacant. As you see, um, the area is a kind of transition zone between low medium density residential and industrial. And we regard the uh, change as um, compatible. There are no substantial adverse impacts and the shape is of adequate size to accommodate the uses. Uh, therefore, it meets all four criteria. Therefore, staff recommends approval and that um, concludes my report. Thank you. Good evening, Kyle Taylor, the Planning Department again, and I will be presenting zoning, uh, zoning case Z16000008, Beth Page Village Revisions 4. Uh, the applicant for this project is Bob Zumwalt with McAdams. This project is within the city's jurisdiction. The request is to go from ILD to PDR 4.733. This is another exist uh, modification of an existing development plan. Uh, this is just very small sections of that existing development plan that they're changing to the existing PDR that's already on the site. Uh, the acreage of this change is 7.87 acres, and the uh, change in commitments, uh, so the purpose of this case is for the change in commitments from the existing plan. Uh, there is one update on this project as well. Uh, the developer has a uh, based on recent information from the NCDOT, uh, they would not allow a full access drive for the site access drive listed on this project. Uh, because of that, they've had to revise some text commitments. I do have those in the slide, and we can go into those in some more detail, and I will be happy to discuss and leave them up here on this presentation, similar to the last case. So again, this is uh, a project within the existing Beth Page Village project is located at the intersection of Page and Chin Page Road. Uh, this project is located within the suburban tier. Uh, this project does meet the requirements of the PDR zoning district with a 7.87 acres of land and a dwelling units per acre of 4.733 and a maximum height of 60 feet. Uh, 
this site, um, this section of the Beth Pelly Village project is vacant and wooded. There are several streams and required uh, stream buffers located within the existing uh, Bethpage Village, and a portion of this has already been platted, so this is an ongoing project. This is just a modification of an existing portion. Uh, this project meets the requirements for a development plan for the PDR zoning district. The only graphic commitments changing with this project is uh, the redesignation of the LID sections of this project. Uh, or portions of the LID uh, of this project going to the PDR zoning district, and they're associated with areas A and B, and there's also a few areas that have been designated as uh, multifamily in order to facilitate their change in design commitments for this project. All text commitments have stayed the same with this project with the exception of the following. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, all commitments with the stay the same as previously approved plans. Uh, Z0647, Z1132, Z130030, uh, except as shown, uh, the conversion of two portions of projects from ILD to PDR 4.7333, uh, no increase in total number of units, adding cementous siding under the multifamily building designa design section of the building design guidelines. Add multifamily designation to pods F, L, O, and Q. Those can be seen on the uh, proposed conditions page. Uh, and modifying the text commitments associated with site uh, drive two. Uh, text commitments with this project are remaining as previously approved, except for those uh, designated for the site access drive two that I mentioned earlier. They can be found on this slide and also the other. Uh, the reason that these are having to be done is because, of, like I stated earlier, NCDOT will not allow a full access drive for site access two. Uh, there are two pages of these, and I will leave them up for a couple minutes for you guys, or a couple seconds for you guys to read through it, and then I'll flip to the second page, and there's some additional. Again, this is additional commitments for the same thing. I believe there's one more page of these. Uh, design commitments for this project are remaining as previously approved with the exception of some, uh, adding cementous siding under the multifamily building des uh, design section. Uh, for a full listing of those design commitments, they can be found on the development plan. This project is not consistent with the future land use map, which designates this area as industrial. However, a plan amendment has been submitted for this case, and should that, and that being the case, um, this project is consistent with the adopted plans and policies of ORDA shown in this slide, with the exception of the future land use map, which it designates this area going to PDR as industrial. And this being the case, staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And staff is available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Have three people signed up to speak. Uh, all in favor, so I give you three minutes each. Kevin Wall. Kevin Walls, and I'm at 1027 Bramwell Drive. Uh, we're a resident of the residential area that's under construction uh, just north of this uh, site. We're in favor of the site and the combining, but we're uh, mystified as to some of the parcel designations that exist on uh, maps and drawings that are, are inconsistent with what we hear, such as here. So an example would be is that this is part of a parcel 209648, and it says it's part of Creekside at Bethpage uh, phase one. And it is, it's not in the phase one drawings, and it's not part of Creekside at Bethpage. It's Bethpage Village. 
So we really came tonight to if we get some clarity on some of those questions. So I'm going to pass to the developers, let them answer that. And we'd like to also understand this uh, change of the road site access because currently the, the site has no construction entrances. They're using the two main residential roads for all construction vehicles. And if this continues to grow, uh, that uh, traffic uh, will become excessive. So okay. thank you. Thank you. So the applicant, Scott Lay, uh, Scott and Bob, if you guys want to address his concerns now, or you can do it after you make your presentation. Sure. So, you know, thank you for coming. This is one of our first residents. We bought this property, you know, almost a decade ago, and I'm thrilled. Uh, to see them here tonight, that's for sure. We had a neighborhood meeting, all amiable. Like you said, they were in support of it. Understood, as the staff report said, this is just a minor cleanup uh, there. You know, the, the parcel designation, I'm not sure exactly where that comes from. You know, really the parcel designation is set by Durham County, the tax appraiser. So really none of the, I don't know, if there's inconsistencies, we should call Durham County uh, because they're the ones that control that through the tax assessments and different things so if there's inconsistencies none that I'm aware of and not sure that not sure how it affects us tonight um, the thing about side access drive number two where we have we're the ones that have the road a mess at airport and uh, page road for you guys that drive that we're having a mess right now we're trying our best to get it finished with our wonderful friends at Time Warner Cable and uh, the frontiers uh, of the world and I could go on and on and on about those guys, but side access drive number two is not, it's, it's really far from where phase one <coughs> is. It certainly would not be conducive of any sort of construction access or something because it's, it's just not there. We are in the works as we're, the, the later phases where we have development in the back. We're in the process right now of designing a temporary construction access that the theory is once the clubhouse is open, you know, we will shortly thereafter start redirecting traffic off of the main roads into phase one. So we recognize that too. You know, we got six or 700 units. We certainly can't deliver six or 700 units worth of trusses, uh, you know, through the main thoroughfares through the road. So thanks for coming out. We really appreciate you coming out tonight in support of us. So as I said, seven years ago, or almost a decade ago, we're thrilled to be underway. Uh, we proffered, not myself personally, but was proffered for the project, a lot of offsite road improvements. Uh, it hampered us from starting the project for almost a decade because it's a huge nut to crack in the beginning. You know, proud to say that we finished adding some turn lanes at TW Alexander nearly three miles from our project site, but we did it anyway uh, because they were proffered. We're also working on the Globe Road intersection currently. Uh, will be a much safer intersection when it's completed. We're going to take it from an obtuse to a right angle um, at that location, which will certainly help. Wake County's got a new school going down the street. It's going to help all of those things uh, go forward. So we're excited uh, to be started and to find a way to fund some of the initial offsite road improvements. You know, as I think was alluded, the, the couple of pieces that are actually changed the land use, one of them is just because of where Crown Parkway was designed, where we thought it was 10 years ago, and the way the uh, design is now that we would have a commercial or an industrial use of, you know, less than an acre you know, immediately adjacent to a residential use. That's the, kind of the, the small piece up further to the top of the page. The other smaller area, converting it to residential because you can see it's surrounded by streams. It's just, it's not, an, it's not an industrial site. Everybody we've talked to, everybody, everything lends that there's no way anybody industrial related would go over there. So uh, the other two things I think were um, adding Hardy's siding, or I shouldn't say Hardy, cementitious siding. Mr. Hardy probably loves it. We all call it Hardy Side. Um, and then, you know, the side access drive that you know, we worked with staff here at NCDOT. And the reason that the, the movement there has changed is the proximity to, from site drive number two to Pleasant Grove Church Road. That, you know, we just thought it would, DOT viewed it as the, the intersection spacing was too close, unsafe movement. So the only thing we're doing is precluding a left out. Everything else remains the same, but we're restricting the access to a left out. So I'll be glad to answer any questions anybody has. Thank you. Bob Zuwa. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item? If not, I would bring it back before the commissioners. Do I have commissioners wishing to speak? I have Commissioner Goosh, Commissioner Bryant, Commissioner Miller. Okay, Commissioner Goosh. Thank you. Um, so um, I just start by saying, uh, I mean, this I'm in favor of what's been proposed here. It seems like a cleanup item. I also appreciate that it's taking some of these industrial sites and, that are close to residential and changing them to a more appropriate, in my opinion, uh, designation for residential. Uh, I could not imagine why uh, someone who lives there would not be in favor of that. But aside from that, I do also want to say that uh, you know I'm from Durham. I, I was born here. Uh, this is one of my favorite projects in Durham. I think it's great. Um, it it you know, offering an age-restricted community is something that, well, we're seeing more of them in Durham, but, uh, you know, th this one is done very well, and so I just want to commend the developers on that. Uh, I'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you. Commissioner Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had actually forgotten how big Best Page Village was. I was sitting on this board when it was originally approved. Um, and I view these changes as minor. I think any time you're dealing with something this big, you're not going to foresee everything or anticipate everything like what NCDOT might say. So I'm also going to be voting in favor of the amend plan amendment and the rezoning. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll echo with my colleagues have already said I plan to support this too but I did want to ask a couple of questions if I may um, so how many additional units will you be able to include in the overall project as zero. a result of the addition of this zero you're not going to add any well that made it fairly straightforward thank you any other comments Commissioner Freeman uh, I also um, echo uh, Commissioner Golsh's appreciation for the work that you've done and I also will be voting in favor. I just had to ask, is there anywhere else in the city you would like to develop? <laughs> I would be in full support. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Bryant. I move that we recommend the approval of plan amendment case A1600004. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bryan, second by Commissioner Freeland, that we send Plan Amendment A16004 to the city forward with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. So in case? Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, recommend approval of zoning case Z16 quadruple 0008. <laughs> okay. It's been motioned by Commissioner Bryant, second by Commissioner Whitley, that we send zoning case Z16 quadruple 008 forward with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. Motion carries unanimous 12 to 0. Okay. <laughs> we will now go to item number 7, public hearing zoning map change request 4830 Hope Valley Road Z15 000 Good evening again Kyle Taylor with the planning department uh, these cases this case was continued from your May meeting 
Uh, the only change being done to this project from that time has been the change in the square footage for this project and also the uh, actually included in your packet is the committed elevation that they presented at the last meeting. Uh, so I will be running through this slide fairly quickly uh, since it's all information that you guys have heard previously. Uh, again, the application for this project is Ben Burkhart with BKB Properties. It is in the city. The request is from CN to CGD. The acreage is 1.34. Uh, the proposed use is for climate control personal storage. Uh, that is now the only commitment. They dropped off the commitment for uh, that or gas station. Uh, this is the existing condition. The, uh, this is the context area. Uh, the site is located at 4830 Hope Valley Road, the intersection of Highway 751 and Garrett Road. This project is located within the FJB watershed protection overlay and is currently within the suburban tier and will stay in the suburban tier. Um, mm -hmm. This project is consistent with the standards for the CG zoning district, which can be outlined on this slide and in the staff report. Mm -hmm. um, Existing conditions of this site is it is, it is existing as a um, gas station at this time and they wish to redevelop it as self-storage. The proposed conditions are outlined on this slide. They include, uh, they do meet the standards of the CG zoning district, the proposed conditions commit to site access points, location of tree preservation and replacements areas, building and parking envelope and project boundary buffers. So the intensity for this site is now 100,000 square feet. Um, at, that was previously cho shown as differently and it's updated now to actually reflect what they're planning on doing. Uh, it does show the two site access points. The impervious surface maximum is still 59%. The tree coverage is still 14%. Graphically, they commit to the site access code, site access, location of pre-sharpation, building and parking envelope, size and location of project, builder, project boundary buffers. Uh, the only text commitment for this project is the commitment for self-service storage. Um, and I apologize, it should just say self-service storage there. Uh, this project is consistent with the future land use map which designates this area as commercial. The comprehensive plan, this project is consistent with the following comprehensive plans with the exception of 812H, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the next slide. Uh, staff determines that this request is consistent with the future land use map and ordinance, but is not consistent with comprehensive plan ordinance, uh, comprehensive plan policy 812H that requires the planning department to recommend denial of any zoning map change, which results in an average daily trips exceeding 110%. However, based on the com committed use, this project will result in a reduction of trip generation for the site. Staff is available for any questions. Okay, thank you. I have one, two, three, four, five people speaking in opposition, two people speaking in favor. Uh, what is the commissioner's recommendation on length of time? Mr. Chairman, I recommend that we give every speaker a minimum of three minutes uh, and um, uh, the develop, well, strike that. Mr. Chairman, I recommend we give every speaker four minutes. Second. It's been motion and second that the speakers in uh, against have four minutes of time, and the that would be against, and those that are for it would also have 20 minutes to speak. All those in favor, let it be known by showing the right hand. He has his hand up. Session period demanded 12 Okay, so the first speaker is Timothy uh, Kurt. Yes. Okay, Ben Barkhouse. Good you have evening. 20 minutes, sir. <clears throat> I'm Ben Burkhart. Oh. You have 20 minutes. I have 20 minutes? Yes. Okay. I don't need 20 minutes. Our intent here tonight is to defer to uh, for 30 days. Okay, so you are requesting a continuance? I'm requesting a continuance, yes, sir. 
Okay. Uh, commissioners, the applicant have request a, a continuance of 30 days? 30-day continuance? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh. Staff. Um, um, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Kermansky and Mr. Burkhart did check with us earlier today to be sure that they would be within the, the timeline to keep the, ca the case moving for a recommendation. And being that the commission has to take make a recommendation within 90 days of the initial public hearing, this would be the last continuance before we have to move forward without a recommendation. So. I just wanted to remind everyone of that. And so aware of that. You, you have no problem with the 30 days, but that's just, I mean, after that, it would be in excess of, of outside of this commission's recommendation period. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Commissioner Goosh. Yeah. Before we make that motion, I want, there are people here who have showed up to speak about this. I think we should continue the public hearing and take a motion at the end so that these people can be heard because they've taken their time to come out today. And uh, that way they may choose to come in 30 days or not, at least they've been heard on the night that they've showed up for it. Okay. Is there any opposition to hearing the people that came to speak and against, and then we can con have the motion after the public hearing? Okay, so, it's Madison, Matson. Katie, Katie Manson, Kaya, K A Y A. My name is Kaya Manson. I live at 4133 Livingstone Place in Durham, and that's uh, in a neighborhood called Trotter Ridge. And so we're affected by this because we're just one traffic light away from mm. the proposed um, site. And I thank you very much for giving us this time. Um, I appreciate it, because I know it's late. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, because that's what happens when I get sleepy. Um, my source of information on this, because I didn't hear about the public meetings, um, is this uh, zoning change uh, report that I got off of your um, <clears throat> website. And I saw that there was a recommendation to um, to deny the change, which was required because the um, <clears throat> uh, traffic uh, percentage increase would uh, be above the threshold that's set. Um, but I did notice that there was this statement um, that there would be a reduction in trips. And I showed up to ask you not to be overly swayed by that, because I'd like to tell you what the reality is behind the numbers. Um, Garrett Road is heavily, heavily congested. And that particular intersection um, is, is uh, really one of the worst I've ever seen because it's not just Garrett Road, Hope Valley, but then there's also uh, 54, 751, and then down the road there's Highway 40. That little piece of Garrett Road which started out, I don't know, in the old days as a little country road is now a heavily used corridor that connects, you know, 15501 to all those, and people are commuting, and they're shopping, <coughs> and they're going uh, to Jordan High School. And my concern is primarily uh, safety and, and what is happening because of this heavy congestion. To me, a little 4% decrease in the numbers of uh, cars is, is really insufficient, um, uh, in my opinion. Um, the traffic is so heavy at Jordan High School, we have a police presence there. Um, that intersection always gets congested. The traffic backs way up. People get crazy when there's traffic. They follow too closely. One little accident, and we have a huge pileup. Um, I don't know what can be done about Garrett Road, but I think that uh, this is a very poor plan. There must be some other usage that would alleviate rather than uh, continue the, the traffic congestion that we have. And I think what you'll hear from um, all the residents will be something very similar to what I'm saying. We're concerned about our safety, the safety of the students. We're concerned about quality of life. Um, I love my neighborhood. I love my neighborhood. Um, but I moved to Trotter Ridge because it had a traffic light. Formerly, for 10 years, I lived on Garrett Road 
and I couldn't wait to get away because I couldn't get out of my driveway. And cars kept landing in my driveway and knocking down my mailbox. So, you know, uh, so this is what I ask. I ask that you follow this recommendation and please don't be overly influenced by the fact that there's going to be a, a very slight decrease in what the current usage is because the current usage right now is almost intolerable. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ken Berger. Good evening. I'm Good. Ken Berger. I live at 4031 Trotter Ridge Road, and I'm also obviously a resident of Trotter Ridge. I'd like to point out that a few months ago there was another proposal for another development on Trotter on Garrett Road, not too far from where the entrance of Trotter Ridge and, and bordering closer to the uh, Jordan High School. That didn't make it this far because the public meeting that they had, 80 residents showed up from Trotter Ridge to object to it. And the primary reason they showed up was because of traffic. That was the big issue, and the tie-ups that everyone sees. The traffic light that my neighbor talked about now, that traffic light didn't exist a few years ago. And I remember when there was a meeting at Jordan High School where we were told that the, the traffic light would be put in within that year. My wife was quoted in an article in that. It took seven years for that traffic light to appear. So we're well aware of that. And one of the things that we need to mention in terms of traffic is foot traffic, because th there are a lot of students walking around that school. At lunchtime, there are a lot of students who walk off campus to go and get something to eat, and they're gonna go around that area. And people don't stop very much for, for students going by. So traffic is a very big issue. And the last thing I wanna mention is one of the statements in the proposal that was on your website so that this would blend in well with other buildings in the area. I have a picture of it here. It's not in color. It's much more dramatic than color on your website. It doesn't blend in at all. It, it's a, it would really be an eyesore, and I don't think it would do anything for the community. And in fact, the development that was proposed a few months ago, townhouse development, I don't think they would like it either, because it wouldn't add to their, their development either. Thank you for the time to speak. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Brazea. Hi, I'm a resident of Woodcroft, and we found out about this proposal yesterday. And um, I've heard from a lot of neighbors, and we're very concerned about it. Um, I echo the traffic. That's an intersection that I go through several times, um, usually in a day. And if you're there in the afternoon, the traffic um, is blocking the intersection because people are trying to get through. So you actually have like a complete log jam. And you may be talking about a slight reduction in traffic, but what's going to be going into a moving um, center are moving trucks. And I cannot imagine adding that dimension to that corner. Um, also, everything in that area is one story. The Harris Teeter is the highest building in the area, and you're proposing to put a four-story building there. It is beyond an eyesore. And then I agree that the foot traffic from Jordan is already very dangerous with students crossing, trying to get across that busy intersection. So it's ugly. It's, uh, we think it's going to exacerbate um, the traffic and not going to serve the area and the city at all. We can do better. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Roly Olin. Hello. My name's Raleigh Olin. Um, I'm a local State Farm insurance agent. Uh, I've lived in Durham 23 years. I've been a local State Farm insurance agent for 23 years. My office that I own is at 4810 Hope Valley Road. And um, so I was in Canada, the land of no humidity, uh, visiting my wife's family. And I get uh, emails and calls from my office saying I have policyholders calling me very concerned about this zoning change. I'm like, what zoning change? Uh, I didn't get anything. And I own 4810 Hope Valley Road. So uh, I came back early, um, and because uh, this is important enough for me, and 
a lot of my policyholders felt as well, that I don't think our, the, the, the centerpiece of our area needs to be a four-story uh, self-storage unit. Uh, the lady in front of me is correct. The highest uh, building we have is two stories, uh, and I don't, I don't foresee a four. I went and I talked to Fonville Morrissey, uh, Amy Aldridge, their manager today, as I had gotten back, and asked if she was aware of this. Uh, Fonville Morrissey is, as you know, is pretty much right next to this property. It's the first she had ever heard of it. Uh, so at the very least, I, I, I don't think that this uh, needs to be pushed through. And I want to thank Mr. Ghosh for letting us speak and hear us out, because I would hate to think I came back from Canada for nothing. But uh, so I guess I'd just like to say in summation, uh, thank you all for your service. I love Durham, and I would say vote against this. Thank you. George stands here. Hi, I'm George Stanziel, 115 Cofield Circle. And I feel very weird being here that speaking <laughs> against a project because for 34 years I've come before this board arguing <laughs> for projects. Um, so I don't make a habit of it, frankly. Um, I never have made a habit of it. Um, but I've lived in, I, I lived in Hope Valley, uh, in Hope Valley, I've lived in uh, uh, Woodcroft for over 22 years. I now live on Hope, just off Hope Valley Road in Weldon Downs. I go through this intersection every morning. Uh, I've watched that whole area. Uh, keep going. I've watched that whole area <laughs> develop. I think, uh, I, I can't really argue the traffic numbers, but I can tell you that the traffic there is horrible. Uh, and even if there was a reduction there, it would be still horrible. I mean, Jordan High School has tripled in size since my kids went there in the 90s. Uh, and there's a lot of kids moving about through, the, through those areas. Um, I, I do, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm just here to be on record as against it at this point. You know, architectural features of it, height, things like that would probably be very important um, at some point. Um, they're right. There's nothing out there that's, le that's more than two stories. And even, even the shopping center, uh, the newer Harris Theater shopping center is fake two stories. You know, so, um, I, you know, I just think that it's, it's, an, it's an inappropriate scale uh, for a site that's this small uh, at this corner adjacent to uh, a church. A, a direct, actually, a church is right directly behind it. Hope Valley uh, Baptist Church is directly behind it, a school. Uh, and I, I just, you know, this is just one, and I don't know a lot about it. I actually, actually, Mr. Miller and I were talking one day, and he asked, did you know about this Hope Valley thing? And I was like, I, no, I actually didn't. And I didn't realize it was on tonight. So I just, I feel kind of strange talking against a project. Um, I really do. And I don't want to apologize for that, but it is, it is right in my backyard, in, in a sense, um, and um, it's, it seems inappropriate uh, in scale for, for that corner. It's a, it's a very small corner, it's a very small site with a lot of traffic. I think, the, I think the, the point about the kinds of truck traffic that might go in there would, would, would add a lot of confusion to that intersection. So anyway, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, the public hearing is open. Is there anyone else that wishing to speak? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Ben Burkhart. I'm the uh, owner representative and developer for this site. Um, just as a matter of record, we did advertise, I think, um, we advertised before we came last time, and then we advertised the neighborhood meeting that we that, that was well attended. We had 44 uh, people that attended. Most of the people that attended were from Hope Valley Baptist Church. Um, our purpose for def uh, uh, requesting a continuance to next month is that we have continued to be in discussion with Hope Valley Baptist Church about 
some of the concerns that were raised in the neighborhood meeting that we are in the process of addressing. As we walked in here tonight, uh, Grace pulled me to the side and said, also, she thought maybe we should be looking at a text amendment request because, as, we, as I mentioned last time, the recommendation or the staff determination is based on the fact that, as everybody has pointed out, this is a congested intersection. There's almost nothing that we could do on that property other than self-storage that would reduce the impact of our parcel on that intersection. So while, I mean, I cannot disagree with anything that everybody has said. Everybody knows this is a congested intersection. It's a problem. We can't fix the problem by ourselves because we're just one landowner right there. What we can do is offer a partial solution. We can't, I mean, that intersection's at 135% right now as it sits today. Maybe our development only decreases traffic by 1,000 trips a day. I think that's how we've quantified it. Um, but that's 1,000 trips. And um, we, we, can't, we can't be the solution for that intersection, but we can be part of a solution. Um, I mean, if we could fix the traffic situation in that area, you know, we, you know, we'd be looking at that. But, I mean, it's almost an impossible traffic situation. So, you know, we heard these same, all of these same um, objections to the project at our neighborhood meeting. And, um, you know, we, we just can't do any better on traffic. Right now we have a high intensity gas station there that is always gonna generate a lot of traffic. And what we're proposing is a low intensity storage project. Um, you know, I guess beauty's in the eye of the beholder. We've tried to make this as attractive as, as possible from a curb appeal perspective. We think we have a really nice design that is attractive. Um, that, that's the best that I can say for, for, what we're trying, for what we're trying to do. Our purpose for uh, kicking this down the road another 30 days was to try and come to some agreements with uh, the congregation at Hope Valley Baptist Church. Um, and the reason, it, there hadn't been any negotiation. It has just been, um, uh, they have a particular form of government and I've been to this point sort of dealing back and forth with the pastor of the church um, and uh, the chairman of the deacons for that church has contacted me and, um, you know, we need another 30 days. One of their concerns, last time I was here before you, uh, I don't know if it was unanimous, but it, it was said we'd really like to hear what Hope Valley Baptist Church said. What, what they said in our neighborhood meeting is, we have a visibility problem and we have all of these big trees on your property that are blocking our visibility and so part of our plan to to uh, uh, sort of deal with that is looking at can we take down some of the old trees that are on the property right now that are blocking the visibility to the church and help solve that problem for them we don't have that exact answer today we think that we can do that. Um, uh, we also heard concerns about the height of the building, which was also stated today. And one of our, um, uh, what, what we're navigating on that is reducing it, reducing the height of the building by one story. So we're doing our very best to be a good neighbor. Our intention is not to hurt anybody. Our intention is to build a really nice project uh, something that, um, you know, is attractive and doesn't hurt the community. Certainly, we don't want to hurt the community. I mean, we're part of the community, too. We've, we've owned that property for a long time. Um, so, uh, with, with that, I'd still ask you to give us another 30 days to come back to you with, <clears throat> with something final. Okay. Commissioner Bryan. Um, before we get into uh, considering 
the request for another 30 days. I feel that it might be appropriate to update my fellow commissioners on two cases that we heard back in February on this board. That was case A150010 and Z150023 for the Hope Valley Commons Business Park. City Council approved both of these count, both of these cases at its June 6th meeting. There was a significant, two significant changes. On the development plan for the rezoning case, it now shows the building square footage is 250,000 square feet. There is also a tax commitment which commits the use as self-storage. And the site for the Hope Valley Commons Business Park is, by my odometer, less than half a mile from this site that we're considering. So less than half a mile away from this site, you have an approved uh, case that is committed to 250,000 square feet of self-storage. So I just thought the commissioner should be aware of that. Commissioner Miller. Um, I intend to vote in favor of the delay that you've asked for, but I will point out, uh, since it's the last chance, in my view, and I'll say this to the staff too, uh, the text of the design commitment in the development plan, the way it's been described to us today, with the inclusion of the elevation as a commitment doesn't seem to be entirely consistent. And I think this could be improved. In other words, you could bring us a better marriage of picture and text in, in order to describe what you hope to do there. Uh, uh, if I couldn't vote for this project, if this was the only issue, I couldn't vote for this project f with what I believe is an inconsistent uh, illustration and text commitment. I think it, it, it could easily be better and get right where you want to go, just a little wordsmithing. But since we've only got one 30-day period to, to address those kinds of problems, I encourage you to use that 30 days uh, w with regard to whatever else you may do with your neighbors. Uh, and I hope that does come to a happy agreement uh, that you'll fix that text uh, issue. Thank you. Motion for continuance. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I <clears throat> move that we reopen the public hearing and continue this matter for one cycle or approximately 30 days. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bryant, second by Commissioner Miller, that we continue zoning case 15 quadruple uh, triple zero one six for one cycle. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. Motion carries unanimous 12 to 0. Thank you. Uh, item 7B, 3233 North Carolina 55 Highway, Z15. Triple zero one seven, and thank you, residents, for coming out. Good evening again, Kyle Taylor with the Planning Department. Uh, this is for this case was also heard back in May, um, so I'm going to run through this one fairly quickly as well. Uh, this is project. Sorry about that. Uh, this is zoning case Z15000723233 NC Highway 55. Applicant for this project is Ben Burkhart with BKB Properties. Jurisdiction is the city. The request is from CND to CGD. The site acreage is 2.35 acres, and the proposed use is for climate controlled personal storage. 
this site is currently developed as a gas station. Uh, and Uh, this project does meet the requirements for the CG zoning district as outlined in this slide in the staff report. As I stated, this project is uh, designed as, is currently developed as a gas station in the suburban tier. Uh, this is the proposed conditions. This request is consistent with the requirements for the CG zoning district. The proposed conditions commit to two side access points, building a uh, parking envelope, building and a uh, project boundary buffer. Uh, the maximum intensity for this has changed to 105,000 square feet. There is still two side access points. The impervious surface is still 69% at 70,000 square feet, and tree coverage is still 10% at 10,237 square feet. Uh, the graphic commitments for this site are location of site access points, location of tree preservation areas, building and parking envelopes, size and location of project boundary buffers, elevations and aerial, and the elevation and re aerial rendering that was submitted at the last meeting. That is a commitment, a required commitment now, and that rendering can be found within the staff report. Uh, the developer did commit to some text commitments with this, both of which were road improvements and can be outlined in this slide. and this slide. And they also committed to the use of self-service storage for this project as well. This project is with, located within the commercial tier and is therefore uh, consistent with the future land use map. Staff has determined that it, this project is consistent with the following uh, comprehensive plan policies and the future land use map. And as such, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan policy and, and ordinances. Thank you, and staff is available for any questions. Thank you. I have uh, two people signed up to speak in favor and one against, uh, Ben Bearcott and Tim Kurt Miski. Okay, uh, five minutes each. Okay, uh, again, good evening. I'm Ben Burkhart. Um At the last, last time I was before you on this project, it was recommended that we had a, have a neighborhood meeting, at, which we did. Um, it, uh, I think maybe there were 10 people or so at that meeting. Maybe we had eight signed up that came to the meeting. Um, there, there were no um, apparent oppositions. There were some questions and um, sort of some lamenting about what's happening in the area in terms of growth, um, but no specific uh, opposition to our project. Um, I, I guess I, that's, that's probably all that I have to say on this one. Um, uh, I mean, it looks like staff is, you know, giving a rather favorable report to us and um, trying to think what else I, I need to say here. Um, we had one, we did have one person at the neighborhood meeting that requested a callback, uh, which we did, and um, we were never able to connect. Um, uh, we haven't received any uh, notices of opposition from staff or, or anything. So uh, again, I think we have a nice project. We're really trying to do the same thing as what we discussed on the last project we have sort of an old tired convenience store gas station that we're trying to build uh, self storage on uh, we think we have a nice design that's attractive good curb appeal um, and it's a pretty good location for it so I'd ask for your favorable vote for it thank you very much thank you uh, Tim Okay, uh, Willis Farrington. Willis Farrington. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak to this item? If not, I will bring it back before the commissioners. Commissioners wishing to speak to this item. 
Commissioner Miller. A question for you, Mr. Burkhart. Yes, sir. Your illustration shows a three-story building. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's a commitment because you have this with this project like the other one you in, intend to include the elevation yes sir uh, the only comment I have is uh, I have the same problem with inconsistency with the text and the inclusion of the illustration in other words I would like to see your text specifically contemplate the illustration so that they can't be read in opposition to each other uh, and if you do that and uh, if you can tell us that you you're you can massage that before it gets to council, uh, then I'm, I'm ready to vote for this one. Okay. Uh, well, certainly, absolutely, we would do that. Uh, Commissioner Goosh. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for taking our advice last time and actually having the neighborhood meeting, which was not required in either case. Um, and I mean, obviously, uh, the fact that you agreed to do that and followed up with that uh, shows that you do care about the community. I know uh, a lot of the opposition for the last case, they may not believe that, but you know it's important that I think we all understand that you, that you are a member of the community and likewise, we're very willing to work with them. I'm glad to hear that you're talking, you're still talking with the church on the other site. Um, and I just want to extend my gratitude. Well, thank you, I, I would just, I just want to piggyback on to that. The, the neighborhood meetings, more so on the other case than on this one, very helpful. I mean, we, we really want to build something nice. Anything that we do, we want to build it the right way. We want it to be an addition to the community. So, it, um, you know, we probably should have done that from the very beginning, just voluntarily. And, and maybe for future applications, even if we don't have to do it, we're probably going to do it anyway. And, and maybe other developers, it would be advisable for them to do the same thing. Any other comments that you will entertain a motion? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Commissioner Miller. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send this case being uh, Z15000017 forward to the city council uh, on condition that the uh, text commitments uh, for design uh, be rewritten to specifically contemplate the inclusion of the elevation. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. It's been motion and motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Turnbuckle? Warnbuckle. Warnbuckle. <laughs> that uh, we send uh, Z1500017 forward with a favorable recommendation with the stipulation that text commitment uh, be rewritten so that it specifically uh, contemplates I can't hear you I'm sorry attorney Mecca sorry mr. chairman that the uh, text commitment in the development plan be specifically rewritten to contemplate the inclusion of the elevation so that there's no no possibility okay. for would you, would you put that in right for us? sure all right thank you so uh, you heard the motion. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley? Yes. Motion carries unanimous 12 to 0. Thank you. And now we go to, where is my agenda? Uh, we now go to Copley's Farm, Z1600013. Thank you. <clears throat> Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Uh, this is a request for Copley Farm. Um, it's another case um, which has a pending annexation as well. Therefore, as you see on the slide in front of you, the city is the applicant for the initial zoning on behalf of Stewart Incorporated. Um, this is a request to zone um, a portion of RS20 zoning down to RR, rural residential. Um, it's 8.337 acres. The proposed use um, 
There is no site plan submitted. There is no development plan. Um, the applicant um, has indicated that if this request is ultimately approved, um, they hope for a conservation subdivision on this property. The area in question is highlighted in red in front of you. Um, one note um, or clarification, I should say, on this map. There is a small portion in red which is actually not included within this request. Um, you may be able to see on the screen in front of you, so you can see these. There's five parcels along Freeman Road. This little area right here um, is a, another parcel which is actually not included in this request. Um, so it's this portion of this large tract here, and then these three parcels over here. Um, aerial view of the site. Um, it is located directly to the east um, of the high school here along Freeman Road. Um, and staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan, um, ordinances, and other applicable policies. Thank you. I need the listing of individuals. Have anybody signed up to speak for or against this particular issue? For case number Z160013, I have one individual signed up to speak uh, for, and that is Mr. George uh, Stanzia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, George Stanzia, 115 Cofield Circle. Um, just here to say that we, the, the uh, planning staff is correct. The, the intention of this down zoning is to get the property into the RR zone, which then allows for a site plan to be uh, submitted uh, by right for a conservation uh, subdivision. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak to this item? Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak to this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do I have commissioners wishing to speak? If George, I mean. I didn't see anybody wishing to speak, so I'm going to uh, move that we send case Z1600134 with a favorable recommendation. Second. second. It's been motion by Commissioner Bryant, second by Vice Several. Bryant. By uh, Vice Chair Hammond, that we send uh, zoning case Z160013 forward with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Ghosh? Yes. Mr. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Hornbuckle? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Van? Yes. Mr. Whitley. Yes. Motion carries unanimous, 12 to zero. We will now go to item 7D and open the public hearing for the town at South Point Z15-0042. Good evening again, Kyle Taylor with the Planning Department. Uh, I will be presenting zoning case Z15-00042, the towns at South Point. Uh, before I begin, there are two updates on this plan as well. Uh, the first is water management has informed planning staff that the city will schedule intermediate upgrades and improvements to generate the capacity necessary to accommodate this project. Uh, originally, there was concern over sewer capacity for this project. Uh, this is water management letting us know that they are making the improvements necessary for that to not be a problem anymore. Um, <clears throat> Additionally, uh, the applicant has provided applic uh, additional information regarding this project and uh, some uh, additional information to us regarding uh, policy, uh, Comprehensive Plan Policy 814, uh, the Comprehensive Bi Durham Bicycle Plan, and 814D Development Review and Adopted Plan Bicycle Plans. Um, 
they're not proposing any additional road improvements out of the existing right of way, which addresses the concern of that policy and the UDO section related to that, and therefore they are actually in cons they are now consistent with those sections as well. If you guys have any additional questions on that, I'll be happy to answer them later. Thank you. Do we have anyone signed up to speak? I've still got the presentation. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the applicant for this project is uh, Jason Clement. Um, I probably pronounced his last name wrong. I apologize. Uh, it's in the city's jurisdiction. The request is from RS20 to PDR 7.609. Okay. Uh, the acreage is 8.28, and the proposed use is for 62 townhome units in preservation of the existing single-family house located at 6304. Uh, that's Barbie Road, by the way. Um, Site is located at site is located at 330, 6,300, 6,200, 6,304 Barbie Road, directly north north of the northwest quadrant of the intersection of I-40 and Barbie Road. This project is located in the suburban tier and is located within the MTC I-40 overlay um, and also the FJB overlay. This uh, site is consistent with the requirements of the PDR zoning district as outlined in this site with an acreage of 8.28 .8 acres, 7.609 dwelling units per acre, and a maximum height of 35 feet. The site is currently heavily wooded and vacant with the exception of 6308 Barbie Road, which is currently developed as a single family residential home. This project meets the requirements for a development plan for a PDR zoning district. The proposed conditions commit to a site, uh, to two site access points, uh, one reserved simply for the existing single family residential home, so the uh, existing driveway. Um, location of building and parking envelopes and the location of a fence required by text commitment four. So the intensity of the site is 63 residential units. There are two side ac external site access points, one for the single family home. The impervious surface maximum for the site is 40% or 3.24 acres. Tree coverage is 20% or 1.66 acres. Uh, graphic commitments for the site include general location of site access points, tree coverage areas, location of multifamily building and parking envelope, and size and location of project boundary buffers. There are a few uh, text commitments associated with this project a commitment as far as uh, the dedication of contribution of money for public schools, the dedication of additional right-of-way, uh, additionally buffering, a requirement for a chain link fence, a construction and northbound turn left lane, a uh, turn lane. Uh, this is within the existing right-of-way as mentioned earlier. Um, there are a number, there are design commitments associated with this project as well. They include the roof lines and building materials associated with this project. This project is currently located within the low medium density residential um, future land use category and is therefore consistent with the future land use map. This project is consistent with the following comprehensive plan policies in the future land use map. And as such, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. Thank you, and staff is available for any questions. Okay. All right, now, I have uh, four people signed up to speak. Uh, I'm assuming two f in favor and two against, so you will have five minutes each. Uh, Gregory David or George stands here. You want to speak first? Uh, good evening. My name is George Stanziel. Uh, 115 Cofield Circle. I'm president of Stewart Incorporated uh, and I'm representing the applicants uh, Mrs. Carla Sevilla and uh, Mr. Jason Claytman uh, in this case. And I wanted to give you a little background and information uh, that we believe is important um, to your decision tonight. <clears throat> this property has been submitted two other times in the past for rezoning. Uh, both cases were pulled during the zoning process uh, based on concerns uh, of neighbors. The latest submission was not supported by the neighbors and a protest petition filed and uh, that case was also pulled. Um, 
Our approach in this case was to work closely with neighbors, uh, to understand their concerns, and to communicate our goals so that we could be good neighbors going forward. Uh, our approach was this, to ensure we understood our, our, uh, our to under, to ensure, I'm sorry, to ensure we understood any concerns of the neighbors. Uh, and although we were not required to have uh, neighborhood meetings for this, for this project, we did. We had two neighborhood meetings, um, and we communicated beyond that point uh, you know, through, through email. Uh, our team met twice with the neighbors, communicated a third time by email uh, to be sure everyone was heard and that everyone had an opportunity to let us know their concerns. We believe that we have reached a consensus. We believe that. And of course, a consensus doesn't mean everyone isn't always happy. Um, but we've all, and we offered the following. We're providing an undisturbed 30-foot buffer adjacent to the neighborhood to the north and west. There are no buffers required, um, but we are providing uh, that 30-foot buffer. Um, the homes in this area to the north and the west range from um, a little over 100 feet to over 230 feet from the property line. So there, there's a significant amount of space between the backs of homes and the property line. And in addition to that, we're adding an undisturbed 30-foot uh, buffer. Uh, we're providing a, an eight-foot tall fence that was requested by the neighbors along, uh, located appropriate, along, appropriately along the, the buffer to limit uh, pass-through foot traffic. That was a concern of theirs. We're providing the $500 per unit for schools. Uh, and we are also um, adding a commitment. I don't know if planning staff, um, well, planning staff can, can address this as well. But we're adding a commitment tonight um, that has already been approved by the planning director. Uh, and it reads as follows. In accordance with comprehensive plan policy 4.2.2, attractive residential development, the developer commits to a minimum offset of 16 inches uh, with two offsets per every strip of four units to avoid repetitious place, placement. That, that means that the, the building units will, will uh, step 16 inches back and forth, at a minimum of 16 inches back and forth, so that you don't have just a flat elevation. Uh, the, building, uh, the building color palette shall include a minimum of three colors per strip of units. Masonry accents of either brick or cultured stone shall be used to avoid monotonous and continuous building facades. We believe that we've been honest and transparent with the neighbors, having met with them twice and communicating, communicated with them openly. Uh, we have met the majority of their concerns, we believe, and have met all the requirements from the comprehensive uh, plan and UDO. We believe that this development is appropriate in this location uh, as it adds to the variety of housing uh, types that currently exist in this area. Uh, for instance, there's a, uh, a three-story uh, walk up town, town, not townhomes, but uh, apartments across the street. Uh, we typically call garden apartments, three-story walk-ups, single-family. Uh, there's there are other townhome developments being developed in that general area. So we respectfully uh, respectfully ask your approval of this case and are available for any questions. I do have with me here tonight Ms. Carla S uh, Sevilla and J uh, Mr. Jason Clayton, uh, and also I want to introduce to you Mr. Gregory David, who will also have something. Uh, to talk with you about. Mr. Gregory David. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to say that uh, I am the property owner of uh, 6200, 6300 Barbie Road, as well as the owner of 6122 Barbie Road, which is a house uh, uh, right next to the property uh, at, at that <coughs> we've uh, maintained and still plan to come to maintain. Um, uh, prior to buying this property, I am familiar, I went over all of the history with the uh, property. 
Uh, we were here before around 2011, 2012 uh, with the project. And one of the things I've, uh, I came to uh, uh, the uh, Raleigh-Durham area uh, in 1995. Uh, I practiced here in Durham uh, from 1998 to 2008. I lived here in uh, Durham. I uh, still maintain a house here in Durham, even though much of my uh, time is spent traveling with ministry and with family. Um, and so um, we have, this is the second uh, you know, time that I've came with doing, doing this. And it seems like the, uh, the, the argument changes uh, each time, uh, but we believe, uh, we've had uh, 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 more than one offer on this project. We're very comfortable with the group that we decided to sell this property to. Uh, when we purchased also the house on Barbie Road, which is at 6122, uh, we was concerned with who was in that house, and so we talked to the neighbor, and uh, the people that we have uh, leasing that house have been there for some five years. There have been no problems with the neighbor, so we're very concerned about uh, who and what we put there. Uh, when I came to Durham and uh, in, in the uh, mid-90s, uh, I was, uh, noticed that uh, Barbie Road as well as Southwest Durham uh, has changed uh, tremendously. Being in ministry and, 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 and dealing with people on the context, one of the things I know is that change is a difficult thing, but the reality of it is it has taken place, it is taking place, it will continue to take place. Uh, and so uh, we believe that this project add, adds value. Uh, on this year, uh, our tax bill on that property uh, went up 88%. Uh, so basically, we don't want to basically continue to just hold the property, pay property tax, and we're not able to utilize this. And we believe that this project, we know that this project meets the comprehensive plan, and we decided to also look at what, what is best interest in the, uh, in the neighbor, their apartments, their uh, townhomes that uh, have been built uh, in the last 10 years, their townhomes, single family homes, uh, mixed use developments that are going up within one quarter mile to one half a mile that are m substantially much larger uh, than this uh, development. But we believe that we have uh, uh, decided to work with a group that we thought that would basically add value uh, you know, to this property uh, here on Barbie Road. So we're very confident in what they have proposed and we uh, have uh, been able to work continuously, uh, you know, with them. And so uh, I believe uh, that this is an excellent project that is in keeping with all of the developments that have taken place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Copel. Cable. Shonda Allen. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. I am Shonda Allen of 912 Forge Road. I am the president of the Irwin Woods Homeowners Association. And one, I just want to thank you for allowing us to come out tonight. While we're last on, on the agenda, uh, we have come out to oppose uh, the proposed rezoning for this project. Um, <clears throat> I not only speak to represent my family, but the 74 other homes within our neighborhood. And as you can see, several of our neighbors um, are here represented tonight, and some have had to leave. Our neighborhood consists mainly of senior citizens and elderly adults that have been there since the inception and the development of Irwin Woods, some 40 plus years. Uh, we have someone that was here in the first home uh, that was ever developed in Irwin Woods. Mm -hmm. And yes, we did meet on November 17th, as well as December 8th, um, mm -hmm. several neighbors with the steward developers and the architects to express our concerns um, about the proposed project of rezoning and building the approximate now 60 plus townhomes on the proposed site for review. All they Although they agreed to make accommodations for us, we remain strongly, strongly opposed to the rezoning and construction of these townhomes. Given the proximity of the proposed construction 
our major concerns consist of approximately 10 points. Primarily the increased traffic through our neighborhood, especially for Windcrest, Yellowstone, and Forge Road. The entrance to our neighborhood is only two houses from the proposed entrance of the townhomes, um, the townhomes of South Point. The proposed construction of the townhomes would literally be in the backyards of the neighbors living on Yellowstone Drive now and Forge Road. Some of our neighbor, neighbors have already moved or put up their homes for sale, anticipating that this is coming. And I don't think that's fair that neighbors that have been there have to move. Um, <clears throat> many of our neighborhood, our neighbors, as I've said, have been there ever since the inception of this neighborhood and are becoming stressed out by the proposal for this rezoning. I've gotten a number of calls today of the neighbors that could not make it either for work or as it gets dark, they're not coming out to drive. And so representing them, we want to say that the increased foot traffic through our neighborhood, the increased exercise and dog walking is what our neighborhood will become, but more so it will become the thoroughfare to get from Barbie Road to Fayetteville, as it already has when we added Crooked Creek, which bumps up to, up to us. Crooked Creek now um, connects us to Fayetteville Road. And so we've already had to add speed bumps on Windcrest because of the increased traffic. And with the addition of the 60 plus townhomes, you can be assured that a minimum of 120 new cars will be right at our entrance. Coming through, they're not gonna turn and go down to Highway 54, go down to 54, go to, up to Fayetteville to get to Walgreens or the bus stop. They're gonna cut straight through um, from our neighborhood, entrance of our neighborhood, to where currently Walgreens is on Fayetteville Road. Also, the current two-lane Barbie Road, it's narrow already, is not able to accommodate the increase in the traffic of this proposed construction, nor is there space to widen the street. And while I understand that South Point is a popular area, we're living in a popular area, how can this section of Durham continue to expand without our streets expanding? We're currently stretched to the limit of the new construction that's going on. As already alluded to, right at the entrance or um, intersection of Highway 54 and Barbie, there's major construction going on on both sides. There are two businesses left because they've cleared everything else, a daycare and a service station. <coughs> everything else has been cleared for townhomes. Also, right behind Walgreens, they've cleared that space um, for Duke Medical Center. And so we are surrounded by construction currently. We don't have anywhere to go except construction going on. So if this additional townhome is added, we will have increased accidents, we, will be, we believe, right at the entrance of our neighborhood, increased crime, regardless of where you are, when you increase people, you will increase crime. And although the proposal was to put up a fence along the backyards on Yellowstone, it leaves open a space where sp people can still walk through from Barbie right beside the proposed townhomes. It does not close off that section at all. And I, I think we just really want to say, as represented here, I will continue to say we strongly oppose it. We have nothing against the developers. We know some of them personally. We have nothing against them. But they will plan, construct, and benefit from the new townhouses and then they will leave and we then will be left to deal with the consequences. Thank you again for allowing us to speak and for hearing us. Thank you. Carlos.
Carlos Capel, Urban Wood Homeowners Association. Uh, I just would like to reiterate what Ms. Allen, Mrs. Allen has stated, uh, and to also uh, add to that the concerns of uncompleted work in the neighborhood. We now, on Crooked Creek, connecting to Wincrest Road, have roads that haven't been completely paved correctly. We have an issue with flooding with residents in the neighborhood. The city has not addressed fully regarding covering uh, uh, or water damage to homes uh, with curb and gutter, incomplete curb and gutter in parts of the neighborhood. So it makes sense to say that if we are accepting or would accept uh, the proposal that why would not we have completed uh, structures in the neighborhood. So that's another issue. Uh, regarding uh, crime, we now have an issue in the neighborhood where a resident on Barbie Road conducts parties and barbecues. And the traffic comes into the neighborhood, parks on our streets, and we have difficulty coming into the neighborhood at the entrance of Barbie Road. This presents a hazard for senior citizens in case of a medical emergency or a fire. So we have to be concerned about that. The other thing is, if that proposal goes through, how will we deal with increasing taxes, property taxes? So those are the types of issues, and I'd like my neighbors to raise their hands just to show the few that have stayed the course of this uh, event tonight, we will increase in numbers, and we will come forward, and we will be present, and hopefully stay to the very end each time this comes up. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other members of the audience wishing to speak to this item? Or anyone else wishing to speak? If not, I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Okay. State your name and address. Carla Sevilla. I'm currently residing with my family up in Boston, but I do have, my work is located here in Durham. So I transport every week back and forth. Um, I am a real estate agent in this great city. I went to school here. I also went to school at Carolina. Sorry, I can cheer for both teams. Um, one of the comments made was that we would do something to the community that I wouldn't be proud of or the neighbors wouldn't be proud of and we would leave. That is completely not what we're here to do. Um, my partner and I have made great attempts to work very closely with our neighbors here um, and invest in the community ourselves. We actually decided this is a fantastic neighborhood so we do own the other property on Barbie and we're keeping the current homeowner there that really wanted to work with us. Um, I am a top rated agent here in Durham. You can look me up on Zillow, read my reviews. I've sold in the Durham city limits for the past 10 years. So I am here to stay and I'm here to build and develop homes I'm proud of for neighbors that I want to keep. One of the challenges that our neighbors have brought up time and time again that we are trying to address is their traffic concerns. And we understand that they are very concerned about the potential flow of traffic through their current subdivision, which any homeowner or even mom like myself with three young children would be concerned about. Um, as you drive down Barbie Road, I would ask all of you to take a chance to look at how people would ingress and egress from our community. And actually, when they do leave, they're not probably going to be going through that community, and they would rather go down the other direction towards 54, that direction is much easier if you've done the drive yourself. So, well, in my experience selling okay, real estate, all, it has All been. addresses to the chair, please. So, addresses to the chair. Okay. Um, we just wanted to let you know that we are taking their concerns to heart, and we do want to work very closely with our neighbors. Um, the other thing, just as a real estate salesperson, when I look at communities for my future buyers, I make sure that it does fit and it's commensurate with the surrounding areas. So as you look across from Barbie Road, you do see a large apartment complex, and we do have single family home neighbors. We want to be respectful to that, so we think it's a very natural progression for them to go from more dense to less dense single family homes 
including the buffer zone that we've, they've asked for. So we're trying to take as many of the concerns to light and make sure that we address all of them the best way possible and building a product that I would be proud to live in, a product I would be proud to sell, and a product I would hope my neighbors would be really excited to be neighboring. Jason, did you have anything to add? Okay, thank you so much for your time tonight. Would you please sign your name yes, and address? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, I got a whole lot of people that didn't sign up. My name is Kendra Edwards and I am um, part owner of 725 Forge Road with my mother, Pauline Edwards, who cannot attend today. And um, I just wanna say that I grew up in Urban Woods. Um, I was out there in 1975 and I remember how there was no street lights. You know, the first grocery Leave store we got was in the 80s. Um, so I've seen the change over the years, but I feel that um, like, my, like my other homeowners that it will cause more traffic and more issues because I've been to the top of my neighborhood at Barbie Road in Wincrest and sat there for 15 minutes trying to get out. I mean, I live, I have another house, but it's just the traffic and, you know, the kids that have to catch the school bus, you know, they have to come up to the top of the street to get the school bus. They have to walk through the neighborhood from their houses back on Forge Road, even from Cricket Creek. They have to walk all the way up to Barbie Road to catch the school bus. So. I think that it, it would like make the traffic worse, but it also will it will also stress the people who live there because they're older. And I don't know how you feel, but I know how it feels right now to deal with my mom who's older, who does have some things that bother her with the traffic and with the increased people walking around and not knowing who the people are. Um, and you know nothing against people with pets but it bothers me that to see people not pick up their animal poop now that's just a bother to me but we get a lot of infiltration already from cricket creek and other places of them walking through the neighborhood with their animals i don't have a problem with that i just don't like you know those things but i think that adding more townhouses and i see the hundred plus is going on bobby road and then you have the places like miss allen said around on um, the other side, and it's just becoming a lot, con a, a lot more congested than it used to be. And I think that you know, even though they have a great idea of, of they wanting to add single family homes, I really think that the main point is that you're going to increase the traffic. And I know that change is good, but sometimes you just, sometimes things just shouldn't change. It should just remain the same to make continuity and to make people feel comfortable within. Um, their own neighborhoods. And right now, because we have had bur burglaries um, since Cricket Creek is open, um, you know, it's just a lot of different things that, you know, you really can't always spill out, but just looking at the dynamics of what they're saying they wanna do and adding it, I just don't see, for me, the vis feasibility to cause more issues with traffic and causing more wrecks. I know, um, if I may say, that there was a time where someone pulled out of our neighborhood and it caused a bad wreck. And luckily, the people did not fall into the pond that was on the other side of the street. But those are things because you have a lot of people rushing in the morning, rushing in the evening, trying to get to place to place. And some people don't want to wait for you to either pull out or they don't want to wait for the other person to pull out. So I just hope that you all will consider Thank that you. what we feel. Thank you. Sir, did you want to speak? A oh, ma'am. Hi, my name is Sylvia Almestica. I live at 6127 Yellowstone Drive. Um, my property is actually right behind where they're proposing to put up the townhomes. I know there's change happening in, the, in our area, uh, some welcomed and some not too welcomed. Um, I bought that property about 10 years ago. I had a young um, child at that time, a son, and um, appreciated the neighborhood and the area um, for the schools and for the uh, kind of nature in a way, you know, the trees and, you know, just a nice, comfortable area. I appreciated the neighborhood as well because it was more of a, 
um, older neighborhood. Um, I had a very young son. I was single parent. I, um, I worked a lot, and I knew that everyone had their eyes on him, even when I wasn't there or um, just, you know, going back and forth to school. But um, so I have a set of um, young children as well, and I've seen the neighborhood change. Um, uh, traffic is tremendous. Uh, it used to be comfortable to have your child go up and down the street with the bicycles. I don't feel that comfort level any longer. Uh, we are working um, as a homeowner uh, association to try to put in more speed bumps, but those are changes that are happening, and um, it's kind of putting a strain on the neighborhood along with some other things that we've had to deal with. Um, I would hate to really see um, townhomes in my backyard, uh, lights, two stories. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't know what it would look like. Um, I have kind of stressed about it because I'm used to keeping my windows open, uh, walking in the back of my home. Um, I'm on an acre lot, so are my neighbors next to me just about. So to have who knows what coming through the backyard one day is my, is my fear. And my husband would be right when he says you gotta pull the shades things like that. So it's a, a, a big change, um, I think. I do think that if something would have to go back there, um, lower level, um, you know, s maybe smaller amount of home, the capacity of 63 units kind of bothers me. Um, so, you know, I know that, you know, they have tried working with us and, and we really appreciate it, but it's our back home. Um, we live there, we have to deal with it, and um, we come out and fight for what we really believe is good for our neighborhood, because we live there. We pay taxes, we go to the schools, we shop at Kroger's and Walgreens, and you know, it's our place, and we have quite a lot of pride for our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, would you please sign that? Okay, uh, see anyone else? If not, we will close the public hearing and bring it back before the, I'll let you speak one my time. Uh, and, and bring it back before the commissioners. Do I have commissioners wishing to speak to this item? I got, okay, George, Whitley, Emma, Miller, Hitchin, Freeman. Uh, Commissioner Freeman. I specifically had a question for uh, Mr. Judd with transportation. Um, understanding that this traffic situation sounds like it's really dire already. Okay, uh, we can't hear you. Sorry. Thank you. So recognizing that the traffic situation seems like it's already dire, I didn't know if there was any plans currently for there to be like a traffic light or anything at when what is that? Windcrest and Barbie Road. Um. No, there are no current plans for a signal at that location. The uh, only real future roadway improvements in the area would will be eventually the, the widening of NC-54. Thank you. And then um, just for staff as well, the current uh, zoning is RS-20. How many units would that put on that unit, on that, I think it's eight acres, sorry. Fourteen single family homes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So just recognizing that um, a lot of the concerns that were brought up tonight, um, I wouldn't be able to support this moving forward without uh, addressing some of those concerns. And that, you know, if there are already traffic issues, none of them being addressed by the city, and none of them being addressed by this current plan, um, increasing the density in that area is going to cause even more traffic issues. I understand that, um, I'm sorry, the property owner is experiencing some hardship with the uh, increase in tax value. Well, the 80% increase, the 88% increase. Comments to the sorry. chair. Comments to the chair, not to each other. But the 88% increase in tax value is um, duly noted as an as an issue across the city and the county. So, I'll 
Thank Commissioner you. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the things that worries me is, is this rezoning has been characterized as a transition, but when I look at the zoning atlas for the area, uh, the, the neighborhood is RS20, that's two units an acre. Uh, there is a single family neighborhood to the north and west that's RS10, that's four units an acre. Across uh, Barbie Road is a PDR that's uh, six units an acre, and then to the north and west, where the uh, apartments are, that's 5.4 units an acre. And what's being proposed for this site is seven and a half units an acre. So this would actually be the densest develop, residential development on the north side of I-40, hardly a transition. And I was wondering, I would feel a lot more comfortable redevelop, I mean, rezoning this piece of property for something that was truly a transition between two units an acre and the uh, six units an acre across the street, if we were looking at something like four and a half or a PDR 4.5 or a PDR 5, but I'm troubled by going all the way up to 7.6. That just seems to me that's not a transition. That, that's kind of a lodestone. Uh, and in, I remind my fellow commission members that in recent months uh, we have turned away developers who uh, have asked for uh, PDRs next to existing single-family home neighborhoods uh, of considerably less density than this, and I'm talking about on the west side and on the north, uh, and uh, with, I see these issues of transition as being similar, uh, and so that's what I would feel a lot more comfortable if this, if this rezoning proposal was for considerably fewer units at a considerably smaller density. And that's my comment. Thank you very much. Commissioner Hammer. I am very familiar with this particular uh, community and many years ago uh, lived on Barbie Road. Um, the, the one thing that, um, as I listen to all of the, the um, um, suggestions that were made as far as commitments to make this project a little bit more tolerable for uh, the community. I'm struck by the 30-foot buffer and the 8-foot fence, and I really would like to hear a little bit more about an 8-foot fence, eight, an 8-foot eight fence that also um, does not completely separate where the individuals can, you know, one of the residents said that you can, it doesn't actually completely, you know, um, shut it off. So, and the other thing, uh, the other question I have about an eight foot fence, who would actually own the fence once the community is done and this is transitioned to the neighborhood and who would be responsible for maintaining that fence and what would it be made out of? Anybody? Yes. Well, uh, let's see. The fence actually is on all three sides of the of the project. So okay. it's, I mean, that's, we only have four sides. One of them is on Barbie Road. So it, okay. it, it does surround all three sides. It's behind all of the neighborhoods. Um, the, the eight foot fence was requested by the neighbors uh, it's a chain link fence, mm. uh, I, and it would be owned by the homeowners association. It would be maintained by the homeowners association. Um, personally, I, I find an eight foot fence offensive, <laughs> but I, you know that's what was asked for. Um. Um, and um, the the I so th it would be it would be installed uh, along the buffer, so it could be actually installed inside the buffer if that were the case. So that right. would help to mitigate the the, look, the view of it. But it was re requested by by the neighborhood. Well, I asked that question uh, about the eight foot fence because one of the um, so also suggestions that were made by the individuals who would be, you know, the realtor for the property was that 
I wouldn't build anything, you know, I'm, I'm building something or, or we are really proud of what we are providing to this community. And I just can't imagine um, anyone being satisfied with an eight foot chain link fence in that neighborhood. And that's, it's just something that, it's, the project does not sound like a good fit for that particular community. And I, I, I just can't support um, that. Thank you. When we had these neighborhood meetings, one of the big concerns from some of the residents was deer traffic, foot traffic through the site. And we had a collaboration with the residents and the homeowners of the neighboring property. And one of the ideas was to have a fence on the property. Um, several of the communities that we have looked at have a fence with the screening material in it. It isn't necessarily ideal, but it would be screened with the rest of the tree line buffer. So it would pretty much be camouflage within the tree line. Again, this was a request by the homeowners that we are doing our best to accommodate for them, and we are happy to work with council to do something that's more appealing for everyone involved. Um, but again, they can look attractive when they are screened with natural barriers by landscaping um, and a wooded buffer that is on the proposal currently. I just think it's very important for residents and homeowners to understand that when the developer provides a fence, that um, where that fence is placed and who maintains that Absolutely. fence once the developer is gone is important. So I it, just want them to, you know, to really understand yes. and think about that. And I would not be in a position, and, and, and I have to at least say that it is because I've had an experience with a developer putting up a temporary fence and leaving it. And um, I do know that there are issues around those boundaries and fences, and that's just a part of my concern, but it just does not seem like a good fit. And the homeowners may not have been in a position to ask as many questions um, when you're overwhelmed by what is happening. Asking the right question doesn't necessarily, um, asking the right questions don't always happen at that particular time. Right. Thank you. And our intent would be just for clarification to have that fence on the property and maintained by the new homeowner HOA, not the other HOA. So it would be very clearly delineated on the current property maintained by the new HOA. So there would be no additional costs for the old homeowners. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kitchen. Uh, yeah, thank you. First, I want to thank the neighborhood folks for staying so long it's been almost four hours and it's a long night um, you know I can't uh, vote in favor of this project and I feel what you guys are feeling because I live near you and I I take Barbie Road everywhere I go because you can't take 40 because it's just the traffic is out of control and there's seven developments within a two mile radius I count I want to make sure there's uh, one on Barbie already two on 50 highway 54 one on 751, one on Herndon, one on Grandale, and one on Scott King Road. I can't go home um, without going through these. Um, I think it's too much. Um, you know, a few years ago it would have been great, but it's just too much development and it's too dense. It doesn't fit with the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, we've got to be smarter about how we grow. Uh, and I don't think this is, uh, this, this doesn't fit what we're looking for. Um, so I have to vote against it. Are you in the queue? Commissioner, were you in the queue? I know, Van is. Huh? Commissioner Brown. You were in the queue. I just asked you, Commissioner Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to the good people of uh, Irwin Woods, uh, here we go again. I. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Commissioner Miller's statement. Uh, this is entirely too much. The density is too high, and I, you know, it just doesn't fit. But I want to speak to the traffic because uh, if you go 1.5 miles south on Barbie Road, you get to my house. 
and I know quite a bit about the traffic on Barbie Road, and it's very bad. I'll give you an example of how it's become bad, or that shows it is becoming bad. In the past nine months, we've had three accidents either on or near my property. And one of those accidents, unfortunately, was fatal. And a young man who was 11 days shy of his 19th birthday was killed. Uh, if you go 1.5 miles north on Barbie Road, uh, you come to Persontown Elementary School, which is a year-round school, which means there are school buses out there, and a lot of them seem to come south on Barbie Road past my house, and I know that because I've been stuck behind them. Uh, there's a lot of cut-through traffic, as the neighbors have uh, mentioned. Uh, the uh, Fayetteville Street gets very backed up, particularly uh, around rush hour in the afternoon, and sometimes taking Crooked Creek through this neighborhood over to Barbie Road is easier than fighting the traffic on Fayetteville, even though the traffic on Barbie is almost as bad. Uh, and I think there are three of the developments are going to add even more traffic. I think the uh, Meadows at South Point, which is adjacent to my neighborhood, is going to add traffic on Barbie Road. That was projected in the TIA. I think the uh, project going on on the Madry property that's north of 54 and south of I-40 is also projected to add traffic to Barbie Road. And I think that the Duke Medical uh, project that's between uh, Highway 54 and Crooked Creek is going to add traffic to Crooked Creek because they're going to find it's going to be very hard to get out on the 54. And when they also discover you can't get on to Fayetteville very easily, they're going to come through this neighborhood. Uh, so I think traffic is a really important concern. And I, uh, I worry about the school children on the buses. I keep hoping and praying that there's not going to be any accidents involving them. Uh, but I cannot support this proposal in its present state. Thank you. Commissioner Whitley. I won't, I won't repeat what has already been said um, about traffic and about walls and fences. And I am a little dis I'm concerned because the community already have some public problems, flooding, flooding, and. Um, and development that's not done properly. Um, and it seems to me that this community is crying out for some problems to be addressed before creating new problems. Uh, if I was a resident, and I'm not, I would have all my elected officials to come there um, and um, have a community meeting and a word of prayer with them. Um, and I'm concerned, staff, that we have too many communities coming with traffic problems that staff can't seem to know. Um, and it might be just me, but um, it seems to me I, I, that at each meeting we have three or four neighborhoods that have been impacted by traffic and the problem does not the problem is not seen before it gets to us. You know, um, and I know I'm getting away from this. I know that my vote will probably um, 
send this project away. Um, these to the council saying that um, it's not approved. And me saying that, I will not vote for this project. Commissioner Van. Uh, thanks so much. And um, again, um, I certainly want to thank again those residents who have come out. Uh, I think we've had a pretty uh, lively discussion here. Um, one thing about sitting here is that you find that um, you, you have to be proud of a vote or decision that you take, and you have to be willing to stand for it after. And um, unfortunately, this would not be one that I could vote for or be in favor of. Uh, I certainly believe um, that you, know, you have to listen to the voices of those who are impacted. Uh, I place myself and my neighbors and my friends and my relatives who live near me in the same situation as those who would be impacted. Uh, and, and I don't think anyone who purchases a piece of property in, in the city of Durham uh, would purchase it with the idea that they want to be impacted, especially in a negative manner way. Uh, and so um, with that being said, certainly I, I think two key terms stand out tonight for me that I've heard. Um, one is continuity, um, that you know the neighborhood, there should be some sense of continuity. We've discussed it, we've talked about it, we've seen it. That continuity that flows in the neighborhood. Uh, and then at the same time, also, um, there should be the idea that, um, uh, I think, as was mentioned earlier, that, that good fit matters. It matters to me. Uh, it's just like a piece of the puzzle. You know, we're going to put, put all the pieces of the puzzle together. They should all fit in nice and neatly. And, and in Durham, you know, we dream big here, for those who don't know. And, uh, and I, I think this needs a little bit more, more, more dream work to go on here. Okay, so I'm going to vote against this matter. Any other comments? If not, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case Z-15-00042 forward to the city council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Bryan, that we send this forward with a favorable recommendation, Z-15-00042. Please call the roll. Mr. Bryan? No. Ms. Freeman? No. Mr. Ghosh? No. Mr. Gibbs? No. Mr. Harris? No. Mr. Hornbuckle? No. Ms. Hyman? No. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Kinchin? No. Mr. Miller? No. Mr. Van? Uh, definitely no. Mr. Whitley? No. Motion fails 12 to 0. Thank you. So on the new business, we had uh, new business from, okay. I do have a resolution uh, of an appreciation. And Sister Huff, Ms. Linda Huff could not be here tonight, but I do want to read this. Uh, public record and read it into the minutes. Resolution appreciation of Ms. Linda Huff. Whereas Ms. Linda Huff was a member of the Durham Planning Commission from August 26, 2013 through June 30, 2016, and whereas the Planning Commission and the Senate, please take your, please take your comments outside. Commissioner Whitley, and whereas the plant, Durham Planning Commission and the citizens of the city and county of Durham have benefited from the dedicated efforts that she displayed while serving as a member of the Durham Planning Commission. And whereas this commission desire to express its appreciation for the public, for the public of a job well done and now therefore be it resolved by the Durham Planning Commission Section one, that this commission does hereby express its sincere appreciation for the service rendered by Ms. Linda Huff to the citizens of this community. In section two, that the clerk of the commission is hereby directed to spread this resolution in its entirety upon the official minutes of this commission and this resolution be hereby 
presented to Miss Linda Huff as a token of high esteem held for her, adopted this 12th day of July, 2016, David Harris Chair, and we will present this to her. Mr. Chairman, move the resolution. Second. Motion is second that we move the resolution. All those in favor by raising the right hand. Thank you. And the other thing in the new business, I have uh, announcements. I, I guess some of you know, and some of you, the new ones, may not know. We requested, uh, actually last year, two years ago, that the uh, city and county uh, provide funding in the directors, the planning director's budget for us for, for training. And it's my understanding that do, we do have funds for training. Uh, and our training mostly is done at the School of Government over in Chapel Hill. They have uh, zoning uh, courses and also uh, planning courses. And the, uh, you can go to the website, the UNC School of Government's website, and look for either zoning courses or planning courses. Is the and, registration open right now for introduction? Uh, for 17, no. Uh, they do have some zoning schedule. Clear. Once the 17 topics and dates are set, they will be posted here. No, but I believe that right now the registration is open for the introduction, the introductory zoning course. Now, I do have the zoning certification course as are, April 18, 2017. Those are in 17, but in the fall, they teach an introduction course, a zoning practice but, course, and a planning practice. All right, let me finish my comments. If you go there and find a course, I would also, if you find a course you want to take, there's prerequisites for the course, and it would be a good thing to be in communication with uh, Sister Grace Smith uh, as to those courses and whether that would be applicable for you. And currently right now, I'm still not sure, and we are working on the process whether you will get reimbursed after you take the course or whether you could re re request funds prior to taking the course because when you register for the course, you also have to pay for it. So once we work that out in the process, uh, but we do have funds. So that, that I, I want you to know that it's there for you and uh, you just have to submit a request for that grant. Anything else before us? What do we have next month? Well, next month, you obviously have the one case that was continued tonight for 30 days, the Hope Valley, 4830 Hope Valley case. And then we have one other case that's ready to move forward. So um, it's a, actually, it's not a zoning case. It's a, a plan amendment case, actually a tier change, um, a tier requ a request for a tier change. Where? Uh, Patriot. I think it's the Patriot Park, Patriot Park case. It's down um, off of, um, in the RTP, off, down below the park in that area. I don't have it right in front of me, but it's not, a, not, a, not a typical zoning case for y'all. So it's something different. Um, I want to say it's um, Klein. It's, our contact has been Mr. Michael Klein, but I don't know the actual applicant. But it's not, it's not to do that. Oh no 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 no! It's it's not, and it's I just say it's down in that area, but it's it's just I was trying to give you a geographic area, but yeah. Whatever became of the, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Go on. So, I was, and I'm sure some of the rest of you were too, on 751 down, looking at the property that we addressed tonight, uh, and it reminded me that kind of across the diagonally across the street and a little bit south from the church, there was a proposal a while back uh, to rezone a section of a piece of land there for another multi-story storage place. Then I heard that they were not going to ask for the rezoning, they were going to ask for a uh, citywide text, a city countywide text amendment. Whatever happened to that? Do you know what I'm talking mm, about? I'd have to go back and, and see if I can figure out which case you're talking about. There's nothing live it's right not, now. No, no, not, not that I'm aware of, not, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And then we had the Publix, so-called Publix mm -hmm. case, and I know uh, Charlie and I, uh, at the invitation of some neighbors, went and, and attended one or two meetings on, on that. 
Right, uh, that's still under review. Right, that that case is still in review. It's it's not ready to move forward right this minute, but it's still in review. It's active. Okay, so. it's got a file number. It does. Right. Oh yes, it's just on its second. Uh, well, well, it's had one, its first review, and it'll be resubmitted and, and reviewed again probably fairly soon, I imagine. So, yeah. so I know it's late. I know it's raining hard, and you really can't get to your car right now. And I know we have some new members. Did Mr. Did he leave? No. Oh, so, so, so I would like to, if we could, just take a minute or two and just give a little bit about yourself, so we learn they learn something about us, and we can learn a little bit about them. And we start with Commissioner Freeman. Um, Deidreana Freeman. I live in the Golden Belt neighborhood, which is east of downtown Durham, and I'm a city representative, probably rolling off next year. I don't know how much to say, but I've got three little kids I'd like to get home to. <laughs> okay. Oh. Thank you, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'm Paul Hornbuckle. I'm a retired deputy sheriff. I spent 30 years with the sheriff's office here in Durham. Uh, I've uh, been in the northern part of Durham County, the Bahamian and Rougemont community my entire life. I live in Rougemont, uh, and I guess, as you say, I represent, it was appointed to represent the Mangum Township. Okay. All right. Commissioner. Uh, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm a neighbor of yours, sort of. I'm a uh, representative of <clears throat> the Lebanon district in the county. Know the area very well. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, I guess I've introduced myself. Commissioner Van. Okay. Yeah, I'm Andre Van from the Oak Grove area, Highway 98, uh, as we say. Um, been here in Durham uh, 28 years now. Um, working at North Carolina Central and Glad to be aboard. Mr. Kitchen. Uh, I'm your Kitchen, and I've been in Durham for 18 years. Uh, and um, that's it. <laughs> There's more. There's more. <laughs> See me later. I have to catch a 530 flight, so. OK. My name's Tom Miller, and I am uh, retired after 30 years of service with the Attorney General's office in land regulation, and, I mean, real estate regulation, and I've lived in Durham for all my life for 60 years. Uh, my name is David Harris, and I actually grew up in Rouge Mount on Flat River. Been here all my life, six or seven years, and uh, been in the, in the Planning Commission for two and a half terms. Uh, my name is Elaine Hyman, and I retired from Durham County Government um, human resources um, director and um, I have been in Durham for 40 plus years and I'm a native of Virginia and um, I was a, I'm an at-large member and was appointed in 2014 so yes <laughs> Melvin Whitley this Reverend Melvin Whitley I'm a preacher, politician, community activist. Um, this is my sixth year um, on the Planning Commission, and uh, I live in East Durham. I'm George Bryan. I live in Hunter's Woods, which is off of Barbie Road. Uh, I represent the Triangle Township. I'm a county appointee. Uh, I've lived in Durham since 1967, and I'm a retired chemist from the Research Triangle Institute. My name is Neil Ghosh. I've lived in Durham since I was born. Um, I'm an attorney. A couple years ago, yeah, that's right. Few, yeah, a few years ago. Um, I'm an attorney, and you'll probably see me recuse myself several times. Hello, I'm Cedric Johnson. I am a, I guess I'm, one, I'm a transplant. I'm a native son of Georgia, uh, uh, southwest Georgia, rural Georgia. Uh, I was introduced in North Carolina as part of my graduate studies, and I 
return back a couple of years afterwards. Uh, I live in the downtown Durham area, but uh, own a home in South Durham. Um, I'm a policy analyst by day. I uh, work in Raleigh with the North Carolina Justice Center. Uh, and so this is uh, my introductory to the, to the council. Well, so welcome aboard to the boat. I need to make a correction. Um, since I am not, I, I think because I have run for public office twice and have not won, that when I say at large or whatever, I'm a county appointee. So for the record, I'm a county <laughs> employee so that my fellow, my fellow commissioners will stop correcting me. Thank you. Is there anything else to claim our attention? If not, we are adjourned. Huh? Look, they're going to rip me about that. No, so it's you're like right.